are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. Zach Black, what is up, my fucking dude? How are you? I'm great. Thanks Grab for that glass. Me. This is cool. This is really cool. I'm really glad you're here, dude. Thank you for Cheers, coming. Buddy. Finally doing it. Mm, yes. A little boule. Yeah. A little boule. Are you a rye guy? I'm whatever someone pours in my drink, I'll drink it. Yeah. No, okay. I usually go tequila. Ooh. Tequila. It's, it's clean. You know, it's, it's the, the clean least stuff. other ingredients. I'm People going say that, for but alcohol. I'm. I'm like, is it really? Because I've I've definitely gotten, and I know people who have gotten absolutely trashed, shit faced on tequila to the point where they don't like if they smell it, they can't. You know what I mean? Like it's that's their alcohol. For me, it's like rum. I think that I it's like I can't. I smell it, and I just get flashbacks. I just can't do Jim Beam because Ooh. of the flashbacks <sighs> when you get drunk off that as a kid. Now when I smell it, it's immediately want to throw up. What's the story there, dude? Do you have, do you have a yeah. Jim Beam story? I can't remember the story specifically, but uh, yeah, let's fix that. Let's fix it, dude. Let's it's gotta it, be. Let's get it styled, perfect. dude. It's magnetic. I'll help. Yeah. Um, you know, fifteen years old. Fifteen? Drink, you start drinking at fifteen? Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I probably is that how they do it I, in fucking Syracuse or wherever you're from? <laughs> I'm from Buffalo. You're New from York. Buffalo. Same thing. Uh, I'm no, just kidding. I probably I'm kidding. had a couple beers with. I had an older stepbrother. Uh-huh. And he gave me a couple beers. I was probably thirteen. Damn. Yeah. Cool brother, dude. Yeah. And he then, was just trying you know, to get you. Time, he was just trying to make you cool, like early on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this. I need to get my little bro a drink. Smoked weed with him for the first time, and then by the time I was uh, fifteen, you know, getting drunk with my friends in the basement and pulling our wieners out. Not gay. <laughs> <laughs> it happened though. What? It never happened. Hang either. on, hang on. G- getting drunk with who in the basement? Your cousins? No, not my cousins. Okay. That, Sorry, I don't, that I don't know why I went there. It's my best buddies. Your best just buddies? The boys. Just, just the boys? Just the boys? Yeah. Taking out their boys in the fucking boys' room? Yeah, pretty much. What, uh, what would you guys do when you took your dicks out? Well, How old were you? I think it only happened one time. Oh. I'm going to say we were uh, younger than 15, so it doesn't sound that weird. No, nah, I was probably 13. I don't think I ever took my dicks my dicks out. My I don't think we ever took our dicks out with each other, dude. Not even at age 12. Yeah, it's okay though. Uh, anyway, haven't, haven't done it since. It was one time. <laughs> the one time thing, <laughs> dude. I always hear people talk about like, uh, like, I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people on podcasts and just like in in conversation, tr- being funny, talking about like how they used to jerk off with their friends. Like the guys, one of their friends had like their parents had the porn on HBO, yep, and they would like jerk off with each other, but like not look at each other. It wasn't, and I'm like, I never had that experience. Like I would be, I would, I would claim it if I had it. I'd be like, yeah, me too. But it's like I have heard that a lot. I never, we never went that far, but it was as close as you can get one time. Jesus and, Christ! Uh, Could I, you imagine? I learned my lesson. We woke up the next morning like shouldn't have done that. Let's never tell anybody about this until we're thirty-two and on I'm, a podcast. On the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> call, call your homies out right now, like Mark, Steve. We were all there with our dicks out. Um, you gotta do a little experimenting and yeah, uh, dude. find out what you like. Imagine that post nut clarity though, when you're like you know fifteen, okay. jerking off with your friends at the, in in these like leather sofas, and you're just like. What have I done? <laughs> Thank God we didn't go through with it. Dude, I'm glad I never did that. Um, anyway, Zach Black. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for yeah. coming on. Um, for people that don't know who you are that are tuning into the pod, um, you are an awesome guy, a stand-up guy, and a stand-up comedian here in Austin. Um, and you are the founder, uh, creator of Outlaw Comedy, which puts together banging comedy shows all over the freaking state. Yep, we're state. trying. Um, so how long have you been here in Austin? I've been here one year, maybe as of today, might be on one year, really? year exactly. Yeah, no way. Yeah, coincidentally, not so what did that on purpose? Yeah, happy anniversary, dude. Oh, thank you. Uh, um, let's celebrate, let's pull our dicks out. And- <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, we're not that drunk yet. Maybe if we get some Jim Beam in here, and- yeah, that's why I don't drink the Jim Beam. Yeah, anymore. dude, you don't want to pull your dick out at your friend's house. Um, so how did you like? Uh, why did you come out here from 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 Buffalo? Just just to because the scene moved here, uh-huh. and I started running shows. Like Outlaw Comedy came about because back in Buffalo, to get on shows, pretty much had to book your own shows, bar shows. Back then, I was calling it Pearl City Productions. Mm-hmm. I'm actually, from Jamestown, New York. That's uh, the Pearl City of New York. Okay. And then when I uh, came here, I was like, well, I need to think of a new name, and that sounded best to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then, then I like the wild comedy. I like some outlaws some on my outlaw show. Shit. Yeah, You're yeah. just trying to exploit that Texas country Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. It's fit right I'm in. I'm going to start a business and just fucking call it outlaw and put a cowboy hat on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll sell out to the masses. Like you know, it. How's it been going? Want. It's going good. Going good? So getting shows, done shows all around town, bunch yeah, of venues. Yeah, you got venues. weekly stuff, right? Little yeah. residency type things going on yep. where you can you do a different lineup every week, right? Yep. Got a weekly show at a brewery. Uh, got a monthly show at a venue, and then you know the shows once in a while in real clubs. Got one at Vulcan, the Dude, greatest comedy club it, on earth. I on, love Vulcan. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. I, I miss Vulcan when rules, every it's metal. I miss when everything like I love the mothership and I love the experience of going there and what it does for the scene. I, I love everything about it, but uh, I do miss that. Like there was just this sweet like moment where everything was at Vulcan. You know what I mean? And like and it was like so it was so cowboy and like like it was like pirates almost like you shouldn't have been doing it. Like cause I remember I was visiting here from Oregon and we would go to like as many comedy shows as we could get tickets to, Kill Tony and like mm -hmm. Secret Show, like while we were visiting before I moved here and it was like it was just like, Okay, yeah, we're gonna you know, we're gonna go get Terry Blacks and we're gonna go to Vulcan. Like we did that like three times in a row and then went home and it was like there was just a, a good energy about that place. I mean, there there still is, but I just mean like when everything was like happening there. You yep. know what I mean? Especially your first time there, it's like yeah, larger than life. You walk in, you're like, holy shit, I'm here. This yeah. is this is the spot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now it just feels like home. Yeah, it's not quite as magical. It's mm -hmm. still, but to all these people coming in it's for the first sick. time, all these audience members, it's mm -hmm. still magical to them. I so I look back and I remember my first times there and how that felt. Yeah, and then I keep in mind that that's how they're feeling right now. Mm -hmm. And it is a special place. It's metal. It's metal. Yeah, dude. How is it oh, metal? It's, got, it's the most metal comedy club on earth. Is it? Yeah. Some of these other ones, you know, they're they're very nice. They're they're all you know, swanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They so got a little the nice, grungy. The nice curtains and the mm -hmm. you know the nice. It everything. is kind of like a fucking rock venue. Right? It is a rock only venue. they don't fucking like do enough rock stuff there. I've always wished that they would put dope metal shows there. There's no reason they should. They could. There's no reason that you know we couldn't we shouldn't get some fucking. Hey, shows I know someone that's some, got an in some there. metal Maybe shows. We can, uh, yeah, well, we could try to do a metal show there. I always thought that would be cool. Would be. You know, but yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, they were originally EDM. So they got yeah. like house music, techno type stuff for sure. And they do you work towards that? But you work there still? Yeah, I work there. Okay, cool. What else do you do? Do you just do? You, is that your only job besides doing the comedy stuff? You just work at Vulcan and then? Yeah, I work at Vulcan just a few days a week. Nice. They asked me to, and mm -hmm. so I was like, absolutely. Fuck yeah. And that's the path of a comedian. A lot of comedians that you've heard of were started as door guys in mm -hmm. comedy clubs. So I figured. That's the move. And it has been paying off. I get to see all these headliners, meet a lot of comics, learn from all these guys doing four shows in a weekend, see how they do it. Yeah. What was it's it like? Me. What's it like doing stand up in Buffalo? Or like just or just like in New York versus because you always hear about like New York stand up, you know, comics and stuff like that and how it's a big part of like the history of stand up and all that. And then it's just like um, I went out there. Granted, I don't know all the spots, but I, I went out there for four days, like at the beginning of last month, and I was just like, I was looking, I wanted to see somebody. I wanted to see, like, you know, who's mm -hmm. going to pop in, or like, mm -hmm. I would, and I even tried to go to the comedy uh, seller, seller. Um, like, page, and they're not, they don't really tell you what's happening. I, I don't really, I didn't really understand how it worked. You couldn't really buy tickets. It was, you had to make like a reservation to buy tickets. Or, I don't know. I've it was, actually it was weird, never but, been to the seller. I didn't do any stand up in New York City because Buffalo is on the other side of the state. Okay. It's like a six hour drive. It's so that classic it's, thing where everyone thinks like the map of New York is just like all New York City. Yeah. Exactly. Couldn't be farther apart. I know. Literally, right? I was, Buffalo's 10 minutes from Canada. Mm -hmm. and then, you Holy know, New shit. York City. Yeah. I was right on the border. Does Buffalo, is, I've heard that Buffalo kind of sucks. Do you yeah. love, do you love Buffalo? Unless, or does it suck? unless you're a uh, Buffalo Bills fan. Yeah. It's awesome for those guys, the Bills <laughs> Mafia. But it's, you know, it's cold and rainy and like not, all the time not good yeah it's okay we got a couple months in the summer where it's uh -huh. decent but it only gets up to 80 degrees max so you just did stand up in buffalo before you came here yeah okay uh yeah i uh spent four years doing stand up in buffalo 
Nice. I had a job back then, a real job. A real job? What were you doing in Buffalo, dude? I worked at uh, Maco Tools, a toolbox company. Toolbox? Dude. Yeah, they, they got it. They had a, to, a toolbox selling toolboxes. Oh, you know? shit. Yeah, gonna, they sure did. I'm, I'm <laughs> that was their number one sales. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I worked there for 10 years, and then I, you know, I also flipped some houses. I thought I wanted to do that. And like then, you bought some and flipped them? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I flipped three houses in my life. Sweet. I'll probably never own a house, so that's awesome. Well, <laughs> well now I'm in an apartment, so yeah, cost of living here a little bit different. A little crazy. But I took that money I made, so I and saved it up, and so I could quit my job and do stand up full time, and Fuck yeah, watch man. my savings account go down Cheers while I try to, that, to bring it back up with yeah. comedy. Cheers Fuck to yeah. that. Cheers yeah. to that, brother. Living, living your dreams, chasing the dream. I love it. So you gotta go after it. So huge difference then, like when you moved here just right off the bat like doing doing it was easier to get my on stage. life is a lot different yeah than it was before you know i was doing the waking up at 5 a.m and going to work mm-hmm. and then getting no sleep because these open mics and things were late at night yeah. sometimes i wouldn't get on stage until midnight still gotta wake up at 5 a.m right now pretty much just all comedy mm-hmm. i only work at vulcan a few days a week and so Pretty easy. I'm trying to get on as many shows as possible. It's yeah. all coming together. Hell yeah. Yep. Need to more content. Content. It's yes. all about fucking content. It though. is. It's that's so how that's how these people sell tickets. It's almost yeah. uh it almost doesn't even matter how funny you are. It's how many tickets you can sell. Really? Yes. I was curious about that. I wanted to talk to you about that. Like just the differences between um, cause you know, like just being around it more myself and like going to the mics and then going to shows and stuff and realizing like there's a whole, I don't know. I think like when you start going to any kind of show in any genre of the performing arts, you just kind of see it as like the show, like it's just been put together and here's the show. And then like when you start booking your own shows, like metal shows, you're like, okay, like they need to have a structure, like, like this band needs to go in the middle, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it's like, it's, similar but i i feel like it's way like i there's so much i still don't know about like um about like how comedy shows are are best structured or like how you're how you're supposed to look at it i've no i've heard stuff about like the opener it's like it has to be a good cold opener and i kind of have an understanding what that means but it's like when you go and put together a show like what are what are you what are you thinking about you know there is an art to uh, how you set the show up, what order you put the comics in. If it's a showcase, everybody's doing the same amount of time or whatever. It's not a headliner thing. Yeah, you want to put comics back to back to complement each other. Showcase would be six comedians doing 15 minutes. That are like established or you know they're good enough that they have the time to do 15 minutes. Yeah, you got to know. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got to know. You got to know. You got to know. You uh, Really, I only, I only throw in, or anybody only throws in a couple of the newer guys and then you have six comics you want four or five of them to be established mm-hmm. and then give somebody a, a new guy a chance we'll throw a bone they throw, a, exactly. throw a newbie a bone dude exactly you've done that a time or two yeah 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 <laughs> who have i done that for you did that for me you did that for me you did that for me no i appreciated that too man because yeah, it, cool. it was so so wait, hey before we move on what else was uh what what else do you have to take into account when you're like setting up a, a show a show or like like you know the shows that you're setting up like like how do you how do you how do you structure them you know what i mean like you've got you said you have all these comics but then you you have to know which ones are like you got to start strong okay put a good one up front just like with your jokes mm-hmm. you know they say do your second best joke first and then your best joke last that's your closer same thing with the comedians in a showcase you're basically i'd like to put the second best comedian first and so you start strong and mm-hmm. then you, you slide that new guy somewhere in the middle you know yeah. so the show's already rolling and good and then your headliner yeah last same pretty much the lineup same as your set the set structure for your own jokes same as the lineup for the show okay. there is an art to it and they all yeah. got to flow together complement each other you can't put i've noticed that two people that are exactly the same back to back mm-hmm and you want to like two one liner guys or whatever you wouldn't want them back to back you want like a storyteller guy and then like yep so you have to kind of know all all the different nuances of the different types of comedy which i feel like normal normal you know 
non-comic people, uh, successful people. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> normal, normal, normal people with jobs that pay to go to comedy shows. They don't know. They don't think about it like that. I don't think. Like people that aren't super into comedy, they don't think about like all the different. I, it almost seems like each person is kind of like their own subgenre or something of comedy. You know what I mean? Yep. Like in a weird way. Yep. And I guess you could say that about every band and stuff too, but it's like not, re it's not really the same. It's like each person has their own like approach and methods and like types of jokes that they do. And maybe there's a cut, maybe there's like storytelling and then there's like a couple like umbrella, you know, genres or types, but it seems like. It seems like uh, everybody's just so unique. So it's like you have to keep, if you're booking shows constantly, you've got to keep a Rolodex of like who's who and who does what like in your head, right? The venue matters too. If you're Ooh, at, you know, true. some of these clubs, they're, depend, they're a little more woke. They're a little more, the audience, here? the type of people, not here, but it does vary from venue to venue even here. Some of them are the type of people that go there they're they're nice regular people maybe mm -hmm. not huge comedy fans or just regular people wanting a night out and then in that case you know you you book accordingly you get the you get the cleanest well, guys you can basically they don't have to be 100 percent clean but yeah along that line and then when you go to a club like vulcan or mothership when they're those are all hardcore comedy fans. Mm -hmm. They want to hear the wild shit. Right. Those are all people that probably couldn't get tickets to Mothership or something or whatever, <clears> and they're <throat> just trying to see something. They want to fuck. They want some comedy. They want to laugh. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Th that's a big thing I noticed basically when you gave me my first five. Uh, which shout out to you for that, dude. I appreciate it because I, I and it was cool because I didn't. Um, I don't think I'm at a point right now where it's like I could really get booked or like, and I think there's other people that are working harder, if I'm being honest, that deserve the stage time maybe a little more right now. But it was cool to, because I was just kind of doing open mics like for no re real reason. You know what I mean? Like I was just kind of like, okay, well, I want to do it. I want to try it. So like I'm going to go try it. And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel good. And then every once in a while I'd be like, oh, that feels better, you know? But you don't really get a sense for like, am i making any fucking progress here you know what i mean like if you're not if it's hard to, to get a sense for that at the mic so when you put me on that that little showcase the first five minute showcase thing i was like super nervous about it because i hadn't i've only just been doing mics and i didn't really didn't have a gauge for how i was doing and then when i did that that was like six months into me doing the open mics and then you um told me that you know it's gonna be thursday or whatever so that week prior i did i hit it hard like every single night i was like trying to get up like once or twice and i felt so ready ready more ready for any for that than i've ever felt for like an open mic i was like i'm gonna fucking because i mean i'm from the world where you well, yeah the goal to work towards yeah exactly just doing it to feel it out and for, like for no sure. real you know uh thing to get to exactly you're just trying it and it's totally fine if you start out not really knowing you don't have to be a hundred percent dedicated when you first start out like you wanted right. to see if it was for you when i first started i wasn't a hundred percent making sure i made progress every time yeah i was just going to the mic just to get your legs right yeah just see how it feels you want to yeah. know if it's for you <laughs> and yeah I feel like it's a weird thing though that it's like you still you still don't always know it's like is this still for me i've been doing it for a year and i'm like i i enjoy it so i think that's why i know it's for me even when i bomb and fuck up or whatever but i don't know it's just i'm from that world too of like it, everything has to be as perfect as possible before you go on stage like with with metal and with music and stuff like it has to be rehearsed you have to play the song all the way through and you have to do it the exact same way every time basically you know what i mean pretty much and it's like with the with the stand up thing, it's like that. That was how I approached it when I had the show. When you gave me the show, I was like, okay, I, th this shit needs to be fucking dot because we're playing a show now. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to mic. We're not going to band practice. Open mic is like band practice, but it's like band practice in front of people, which is so weird. You yeah. would you would never practice band practice in front of people. Even for me, still, I do much better with my joke writing when I have something to write for. When I know there's a show yeah. coming up and I know the venue ahead of time, I'm like, okay, I have to have a set ready for this. Mm -hmm. I write way more jokes and do more writing. In you that bring it time. a little harder. Yes. Yeah. Than when there's no really no uh, thing to look forward yeah, to. It's exactly. Just, just doing it week to week. <sighs> and then, to write and jokes. also, there's something I've noticed that like mentally happens to you when you're going to mics like like you go every night of the week 
twice, uh, two different yeah. mics. It's like there's a they're pretty. You're hanging brutal. out. You're hanging out in a lot of dark places. Yeah, like just with nobody at. Well, and everybody's kind of like out in the, on the patio joking about like how fucked up their life is and how broke they are, and you're just like, God damn, this is just like. And then you go on stage and you're like, Yeah, here's my joke. You know what I mean? And then and then like you know like Monday, uh, I was went to your open mic. You do an open mic every Monday at Axis, mm-hmm. uh, bar here in Austin. And that was like the first I've been like slacking on, you know, getting out to these open mics. I've been getting out less than I want to. You know what I mean? And uh, and so that was like I was like, I fucking have to go out, you know, and, and go up. And I and I tried something else different, too, where I like I didn't have anything to drink and I didn't show up like stoned and I didn't talk to anybody. Really, I said hi to you and Alden mm-hmm. and then signed up and then I went in a corner and just kind of like wrote down on my notepad and I was like just kind of watching the comics between you know you writing did really stuff. well this past Monday you had a lot of new lines dude I and that was the other thing is that I tried like new stuff and like that was scary yeah and some of it I was just like I don't know where I'm going with this but uh, you know I'm gonna just like get out I'm gonna get out what I have written down and, and it paid off you gotta thought, risk it for the biscuit you do dude you <laughs> really do and it's and the other thing too is that I was getting tired of like my you know you two Jeffrey Epstein joke. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was getting tired of some of this stuff, and it's and you jokes get old to you. They get old to you, yeah. And so it's like some of my best jokes from learning. a couple of years ago. I never tell them because they just <laughs> lost. Their Give me steam. one, dude. <laughs> uh, I had one about you know like uh, stupid people, and it just doesn't hit the same. Like a yeah. bunch of lines about, and the time had passed because one of the, some of the tags and punchlines were like current s- stupid events. lives matter march. And oh, hashtag okay. me stupid. Yeah, and you th- can't do that. Those things have come and now. gone. Yeah, it's too Boring. far gone. Yeah, and you know it just doesn't hit the same anymore. That's the so one. Let them the, go. Yeah, that's another thing I think about when, like, comics seem like so good at being on that like current event thing. Like a lot of them say they're like, I don't know if they're reading the news or like how are they getting this fucking. The best comics are on top of that stuff. And but it's like and that stuff is so turn and burn because we go we go through shit so fast in our news cycle and our attention spans are so low now. Like it almost seems like I don't know. It seems it seems like people like those guys have to be there. It's like the forever 21 of like material when you're writing that current event because it's just built to be like disposable material you know what i mean like you can use it for you can six use months it for the moment yeah or whatever it's and not getting on the special though yeah it's, it's gonna be good so maybe i that. maybe i should try more of that stuff but i also just like i'm so don't give a shit about the new the news stuff so it's like reading it just like uh that makes me fucking yeah i don't so. talk about the news too much i try yeah. to just talk about my own life because that's important in comedy too the audience has to get to know you that's what I've seen. Some of the biggest comics, they're talking about, they get to know them as a person. Yeah, like Gillis has jokes about his dad. That's like a whole sub, that's like a whole yep. thing that like, and it's Bert like an Kreischer. inside joke. You're making inside jokes with your fan base or something, right? Yeah, Burt Kreischer, his whole thing is just about his life. Mm-hmm. His fans are fans of him, not even of his And of up. his like wife and his kids and shit. And like. then someone like Anthony Jeselnik, the exact opposite. He does. I'm not super familiar with him, honestly. He doesn't talk about personal things at all. It's just a lot of one-liners. It's just silly shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him, not so silly. More sarcastic. Who are your, like, golden, like, like, who are your fucking, who who are your, like, sta- gold standard comics for you? Okay, when I first started, I watched a lot of Don Rickles and um, Norm MacDonald. Okay. You ever heard of Don Rickles? I I think I've heard of him, but I'm not familiar with. I'm not familiar he, with a lot of the, like, super old stuff. You know, He I, was on, like, Johnny Carson. This guy. Okay. Long time ago, but watch still funny. All's YouTube videos, yes. Okay, I'm gonna write it down. I need to do roast, my research on this stuff. He makes fun of people. He roasts the situation, and not even his uh, stand-up material. He's just always joking, making fun of people for what they look like, things <laughs> like that. Just calling people out in the audience, like the goat of crowd work. Really? Yes. Don Rickles. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good name too. It's a funny. He's that's like a clown's name too. Like Don yeah. Rickles, you know. He was the man. So. That I liked that a lot. Um, Norm but too. Now, Norm McDonald, of course, savage, so good, yeah. so funny. Nobody can do what he did. No, nobody can touch he was that. So weird. Like when he was on Larry King saying he was a closeted gay man. Yeah, that's such a good bit, dude. Can we pull that up? Can you can you search for that? 
Search uh, Norm McDonald. It's not Larry King. It's Conan O'Brien. Is it Conan? Yeah. 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 Norm McDonald, <laughs> Conan O'Brien, Closeted Gay Man. Try to find one that's not on YouTube if you can, because YouTube is weird. We're already we're not monetized, so you can't demonetize me because I'm not monetized. You know what I'm saying? I'm a rebel. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm un, I'm unknown enough that I don't have to worry about being demonetized yet. But you'll get there. You just I, have to get to thousand followers. I think they're changing something about somebody there who's a super subscribers somebody who's a super. I think it was Tim Warner told me that like because he's super nerdy about the YouTube like yeah. st- all the st- algorithm and all the stuff. He's like really really getting into it. And uh, he was saying they're changing the monetization the thing. thing that- they're changing the monetization thing. So, uh, so like I think it's like more on watch time, and mm-hmm. not fall like it's just three thousand hours of watch time or something. Is it three thousand? I think that's what they're changing it to. I don't know. Okay, you have to fact check yeah, that one too, was, Harrison. Uh, what are they if they're changing 10, the monetization requirements for YouTube? I don't know. Um, let's watch this, Norm McDonald. Though. I guess the biggest thing that nobody knows about me. Is I'm a deeply closeted gay man. What? <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, that's. You're a gay man. I'm not gay. <laughs> I said I'm deeply closeted. <laughs> well, well, I'm wait. As straight as an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're a gay man who won't admit it. No, no. Do you know what deeply closeted means? Yeah. It means a man who will not acknowledge that he's gay. Yes. So I'm telling you, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wife. I just you got, got a wife. I That's just got married because I thought uh, go through that charade, uh, keep appearances up. <laughs> Norm was wild, dude. That's so funny. That's such a. It's such a weird. He's just such a a, a kooky weird guy. Yeah. I, I wish he was still around. I heard nobody yeah. knew he had cancer, even. Right. Didn't tell anybody. What a savage! His B. his final joke, dude. A big, the big, the world's biggest misdirect, right? <laughs> like I, I'm just oh, fine, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. oops, I have cancer. I'm dead. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's like that's mm-hmm. the that's the big that's the biggest joke you can do. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so I learned from him, you know, just seeing him on YouTube that you, as the comedian, he learned that you are the joke. Not ma- he that was his approach that you are the joke especially when he went on these late night talk shows you're not just telling jokes you are the joke so he's totally cool making fun of himself yeah. and playing the dumb guy even though he's probably the smartest guy in every room he was in he's totally cool with being the dumb guy just for the laugh mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so people laugh at him right that self deprecating that. shit man people love that mm-hmm. and you always see too like a lot of the open mic stuff too these people don't get that it's like a lot of people go up and i mean i i'm not one to talk you know i'm still learning too but it's like i've i have observed some things while i've been going to these you know and it's like there's definitely those guys that are like just getting into it like at the same spot that i'm at but they kind of go up with more of a like i'm cool like i'm funny but you know and you're just kind of like uh you know you give them a chance couple a couple lines and you're like man this guy doesn't it's like he should make fun of himself a little bit i always try to make fun of myself a little bit you know but yeah Trying to do better at that. Especially guys like us. You have to make fun of yourself. Yeah, dude. But everybody does that, too. Attractive, right? young, beautiful yeah, men, yeah, dude. Yeah. Beautiful, blue-eyed. A couple blue of hot, couple like of hot dudes, dude. You really got to make fun of yourself, dude. <laughs> you do. You can't go up there and cool guy. We're not there to... Nobody's there no. to see the cool guy. You just want to laugh. Dude, I had... I finally had my one... My first ever crowd work dig that, that worked. Or, yeah? And, dude, because I'm still so... So, like I said, coming from, like, the metal world, like, when I'm on stage, everyone's watching. You watch me and you listen to me, and when I tell you to jump up off the ground and bounce around, you do what I'm saying because I'm confident and I've got the badass metal band behind me mm-hmm. and we're fucking kill. And then when I'm so I don't get de- you don't get derailed by the crowd, right? I'm not used to this shit. So when I'm at the Lucky Duck and this drunk girl is like responding, I'm like, "So you guys ever?" And she's like, "I have," you know, and she's like screaming at me. I'm just like. I'm like fuck, you know, like I was gonna say some shit, or like they'll finish, they'll finish the joke for you, kind of thing, you know. Oh, it's because, oh, it's because it's a period. Oh, it's, oh, it's that's what it, they like say your punchline. You're like, fuck, you know, like I don't know what to do here. But then I had my, I had one dig. There was this guy at the the Lucky Duck, and he had, a, he had like it's like the cringy guy that just found out about the mullet like last week, and so he he made his hair into a mullet and he's like his confidence went from here to like here because he's got this fucking 
Kenny Powers let, haircut. Let me go up there. Let me get five minutes up. No, there. yeah, and I, I don't. Yeah, exactly. I think he ended up signing up because his friends were like, "Sign up, dude!" But he was like, you know, he was making call outs and stuff and like disrupting. But that's what the mics are for. You know what I mean? So it's like whatever. But um, I, I was like, oh, I got it. Like I know that if he fucks with me, I'm gonna say, you know, give it up for Morgan Walmart, dude. You know, because he had a and dude, it cr- it cr- the people his friends he was with like almost fell over. And yep. I was like that. Yes, I want the friends. To, I want to get better. I want to roast get, one of their buddies. Yes, I want to get good, better at that. How do you get better at some shit like that? Like just repetition. Keep doing it. Be in a similar situation. <sighs> the quickness. The quickness. And then it'll come to you. You know, because you spend enough time on stage, you're gonna run into similar situations. Yeah. You're gonna know how to deal okay. with them. That Next guy sense. with a mullet, you got one locked. Oh yeah, loaded. dude. Oh yeah. I I hope every heckler has a mullet from here on out. <laughs> yeah. That one's good. Well, you don't though because you want right. all the diversity. So then yeah. you got plenty. You got one for so every you got situation. More. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. There'll be another guy with a mullet. Do you have a good heckler story for me? A recent, maybe a recent one, where you really just owned somebody, or just said what something funny. Recently, it doesn't have to be owning somebody. Just you know. Trying to think of uh, if one happened last night. Just did a show last night. What happened there? You know, <laughs> it's just all lost in the fucking. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's all, all the same. blur. It's all blur. It's, it's every night, dude. I can't think of one right now. That's why you got to record sets, I guess, right? I'm so glad I recorded my set on Monday, dude. I'm so glad I recorded that. That was I haven't been recording them, and so I recorded that one. Yeah. And I was and and I was like I felt good about it, and I was like, oh yeah, I have it on camera too, so I can like figure out why it worked or whatever it's cool that little room is cool man that little like uh bar it's just that might be my favorite low-key like just i've always i think out of all the mics i've only ever done decent there really yeah Yeah, it's a a good spot it's got a good reputation in the comedy community here yeah you know there's open mics at these clubs too creek in the cave has open mic every night but people still come out to access it's just the vibes are good there i I think it's a lot how alden and i have set it up yeah we we make it fun. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are great hosts. It's all about the great vibes. Great dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like now that you say that, I've ha- been having those thoughts recently where I'm like, hey, I could go try to sign up at Creek. But it's like I almost feel like I'm not there yet. And I know that sounds like not true. Like I could – I've been on that stage a couple of times f- doing it for nobody. But it's like for some – it just feels a little more of like a who's who. Like, you know, there's like a lot of like – it's probably a good place to hang out to get better. You know what I mean? But I just feel, I don't know. It's, uh, my confidence level is maybe not high enough to like, it, or I haven't gone up in front early enough because I always go up so late over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? 1 a.m. 1 a.m., yeah. And it's just like, it just feels like, if when I walk in that building, I, I'm just like, I suck. Like that's, for some reason, like you I have no chance to feel that. I don't know why. I don't know why, but that's what that room. That's what that's how it makes me feel. So I need to get over that and quit being a bitch. Yeah, it just takes time. Yeah. You just need to spend more time there. Yeah. That will wear off. Yeah, kind of like the same thing with me walking into Vulcan the first time. You know, it was mm-hmm. larger than life. It was like, holy shit, I'm here, and now I'm there seven days a week. It's like your living room. I was just there this morning. Yeah, just hanging out. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Just, we had to set up for uh, the show tonight. They needed you want me. Some in more there. of this. Absolutely. Keep it flowing. And, uh, top me off right there. So, um, more. do you remember like the first time you uh, like really killed? Because I I still feel like I haven't, and and I think fairly so. Like I don't de- I don't necessarily deserve to. Ha- I haven't done enough work and haven't gotten good enough yet to like earn a good killing. But like I I feel like uh, I feel like it's coming soon like you it know it will come and uh and i'm curious what that was like like your first time I do you remember, remember your first time, time just dom and you're just there you're like I, i'm killing i couldn't right believe it it had never happened before i never even come close to killing and then it happened like so yeah i wasn't expecting it at all i wasn't like oh i'm about to do this sold out show and i'm about to crush or like i, I know this material surprise. so well like i'm gonna when, kill with this material yeah, so I was like six months into comedy, so that was that was really big for me because then I didn't kill again for how long have you been another doing? six months? Five years. Okay, it was a it was a very slow start in Buffalo, New York. Okay, especially uh, my second. I was only one year into comedy, and then with the pandemic, took an entire year off. I couldn't get on stage for thirteen months in New York, and I was Jesus Christ. So yeah, really only been getting after it for the last three years because. 
it was a slow start but so i was about six months into comedy and that really like motivated me to keep going because i was like this is what it could be like it's like chasing the dragon once you kill one time and yeah. for me it came out of nowhere i was doing terrible open mics i had done a couple little bar shows nobody laughed and then one time i was just in my hometown it was a gig in a, a golf course clubhouse <laughs> <laughs> and it was sold out. There was 150 Holy people in there. Damn. And my first joke, they just laughed so hard. It was like a surprise to me. And then the rest of the set, I just crushed every joke. They were just such a hot crowd. My jokes weren't even that good. <laughs> but they were just so hot. It. They wanted me to do well. It felt so good. I've been chasing that ever since. Yeah? Yes. That and was, that was in New York? Yep. Oh, damn. No, so you no, haven't no. had a have you had a moment similar out here where you're just killed or do you think yeah okay i've had a couple moments <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah every night well, every now, time i go on stage yeah it's not every time i, I go on stage <laughs> but once in a while when the crowd's good and i'm feeling right because i can't i i have a hard time faking it i if i'm feeling good i do better if i'm i can't fake it if i'm like not in the right headspace when i go up yeah like however i'm feeling really translates when i'm on stage mm -hmm. i have a tough time faking it is that something so that's something that people do they fake stuff when they're not feeling like well, they fake how i don't know their energy is some people can uh you know they'll be having a bad day or whatever and then they they turn it on when they go on stage but yeah for me i need to be having fun before i go up mm. and now you know i've been doing it five years now now i don't really need to think about my jokes I'm not like obsessing over what order I'm gonna do them in, mm -hmm. so I can just be chilling with the other comics, have a couple drinks, having a good time. Then when I go up there, it's just like I was same vibe as when I was just off stage. We're just hanging out, everybody's having a good time. Yeah, and I bring that to the stage, and it goes much better when I'm actually having a good time. When I'm stressed out, when I'm running shows, it's a little bit different because I'm like when to you're set. hosting, and so you have to get up and do ten minutes or whatever. Mm, my sets are not as good when it's my show because mm. there's more at play. I can't just you know I'm not just there having a good time doing my set. Right, I'm like making sure everything. It'd be like if I did a set at Guzzfest or some shit. Exactly. Right. You're worried about a lot more. You're worried about the, checking the people in. Yeah. S setting up all the production, getting all the comics. Is Hans up. Kim here? Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly sometimes he's not there. he was late for you the show do that 25 show. minutes yes <laughs> dude that was so rough end. what dude i was it would suck because i was so worried about sucking the air out of the room and i feel like for my first show thing i ever did i did pretty good like i recorded that set and i was like sweet i sent that to people that was the first thing i've ever sent to people was like i yeah i'm doing stand-up dude and i sent to like my best friends you know and uh and i got some laughs and they didn't hate me i didn't suck the air out of the room and i was like uh is is hans kim here yet and you were like you were like let dad come up there and fucking <laughs> handle the situation and so dad came up and, and dude out. well dude but you you had to basically like you said you had to do like 20 minutes and it's like you basically i don't want to say you bombed but it was like you fucking you kind of you had no choice but to suck the air out of the room because you weren't prepared to like put up an extra 20 the minutes vibe were weird because I had already done my set yeah. earlier like, in the Why show. is this They're guy? Like, this guy is coming back <laughs> up and doing another 15 minutes. That's weird. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already did all the A jokes like, in the first We set, already then. gave you laughter. Like, we don't have any left for you, man. Yeah. How many times is this guy going to come up? Yeah. Jesus Christ. We get it. You're running the show, <laughs> Zach. Oh. But. But no, it worked. I was like, oh, Zach took the bullet for me, so I didn't have to fucking. Zach was out Imagine there fucking. Made you made stay you up there for 25 Dude, minutes. I would have been. <laughs> honestly, it probably would have been good for me. Like, it probably would have been a good learning lesson and, like, putting me to the fire kind of thing, you know? That's helped me a lot every time I've had to, whenever you have to stretch yourself, when someone, the first time, you know, right now you're doing five minutes, first time you get booked for 10 minutes to test you. Yeah. And you learn from that. You have to, it's like sink or swim. So sink. in that in that situation, is it, like... Is it kind of a less is more thing? And what I mean by that is, like, can you – how much do you need to basically, like, to solve that problem, do you need to chill and do your jokes a little slower and, like, let let the laughs, like, breathe between 
the jo the you know the between like the tags and stuff like or like do you need to slow the material down and add a few things in or do you think it's is it better or worse or different to like like just add new stuff in and be like okay well i have to do 10 minutes so i'm going to try to just like get more jokes and more jokes and more jokes in or is it better to just slow everything for down? me i don't just slow them down i don't do it slower i try to stretch them out longer than they i guess that's been. what i mean that's kind of what i mean by i mean slower. with with more tags yeah and some more interaction things like that i don't necessarily slow them down and try to go through them slower mm -hmm. i just try to add more now like when i have to stretch now's the time to try to get some genuine crowd work or oh, try yeah, to think of new tags. Yeah. That what I do you do? Said, yeah. yeah, like some, you know what I mean? What do you do yeah, for work? What do you yeah. do for a living? How yeah. long you guys been married? Yeah. What are your crowd work questions, dude? Do you have any that you, do you no, have any I try to be, I organic. used to, I okay. used to have the prepared crowd work. Is that hacky? That's hacky, right? Yeah. It yeah. Is. It's not, is that looked at as hacky not, by right people? Now, no, it's fine. Especially at your stage. No, totally do that. But so then, Morgan Walmart having that locked for the mullet guy is fine. That's totally fine. You know, you can do that. I would still consider that in the moment. If you mm -hmm. look around before you go on stage and you think of something, that is not as hacky. But but now I am more comfortable talking to the crowd like I would talk to a person. Right. Like I'm this. not. Yeah, I'm not preparing things ahead of time. It's, things mm -hmm. come to you in the moment, especially when you're on stage. You and you're looking at a going. stranger. I'm never sharper than when I'm on stage. Yeah. Something about when you're up there, all the neurons are firing in, in my brain. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yeah. I'm starting to feel a little more like that. Like now that I have some like stuff that I know I can fall back on, I, I think I'm I'm close to like fucking dipping my toe in a little more crowd work. Because right now I'm going up there and I'm like, please don't fuck with me. You know what I mean? Please just let me try my jokes. Well, you know? now, you like, <laughs> now you have enough jokes you can uh, do a joke. Try some crowd work. If it doesn't work, then right back, back into a joke. Yeah. That's the move. Yeah, okay. You don't have to rest it all on whether or not that crowd work worked or not. Yeah. I also feel like people like right now are looking for that cloud work crowd work clip. Like people like Stav people like Stavros that like these people that blow up with the crowd work, you know, and are really, really good at it. It's like all the other comics like are seeing that and maybe they're going like, Oh, I need to get my crowd work clip, right? Something like that. That is the new trend. It's all crowd work clips. Those are the guys and girls that are blowing up on Instagram right now. They're blowing up with their crowd work. Do mm -hmm. you think that's a good thing, or like, or is it bad or good or indifferent? Like, does it not matter? I don't think it matters. Yeah. That's just what it is. That's the because uh, your material is still going to be your material. So it's like if you're great at crowd work on TikTok, but your material sucks, then people are just going to know that when they see you, right? Yeah. Um, no, that's just uh, what comedy is right now. It's a lot of uh, crowd work clips on. Do you smoke marijuana? Yes, of course I do. Would you like to smoke a little bit of marijuana? Yeah, I it. bought. I brought the saddest little Lone Lone Ranger nug. This little tiny little nug. I like to smoke marijuana on the podcast so people think I'm cool. Yeah, I'll smoke. smoke I'll smoke on the podcast. I don't smoke Let's before I go weird, on stage dude. anymore. Let's just get high and stare at each other here on the podcast for a little bit. Okay, let's do it. I think yeah. he's. I think he thinks I'm weird. I think he thinks I'm gay, dude. I don't know if he likes me. You know what I mean? Now, uh, yeah. Before I go on stage, I don't smoke weed anymore. Oh, I, 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 you know, I wouldn't, uh, you know, say no. You know, if I get, but I don't. Uh, no. I would say no. I, have to I would say no. And dude, I don't even smoke weed before I play sh metal shows anymore. Cause I get, I get in my head weird where I'm like, I'm like, am I, is this whole thing like kind of gay? You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, is this whole thing like, yeah, you're like these people, why, um, do I belong up here? That's when the yeah, imposter syndrome that, sets in. That for sure. And then also just like, I'm up here playing like raw, doing raw, raw screams in a metal band. Like, is this totally lame? Like, am I totally lame for all? Like, is all of this lame? That's like, just I, the like, marijuana talk. It, dude, it, it is. no, it, it is. The, I know it is. Like, I'm not. so cool. I never think, I never actually think that. Like, when I wake up the morning, like, the next day, I'm like, no, dude, that was cool. But it's like, if I get high and I fucking go on stage and try to do metal stuff, I'm just, like, so timid and, like, I'm just, like, a different. I can't tap into my, like, Ugh, you know, like, I can't tap into, like, the fucking metal guy inside me. Yeah. I don't know. I look at it too objectively, like. You know, yeah, like I think the weed is weird. This is weird. All, testosterone. It's like all these. I think and it is confidence. Too. Yeah, when you're sober, you're does weed affect your testosterone? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, Harrison. but uh, Harrison does some it. Some people say it does. Some people say it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Use your mic. Does it? Yeah, uh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, K 
Can we I get mean, some factuals? <laughs> they they they've had facts um, or studies both ways. Like tilt that down a little bit. I could do that. Yeah. Um, they've done studies for athletes, and other athletes have wanted to like prove them wrong. The ones that say that it you know doesn't affect testosterone. Other athletes who are like super macho have been like, okay, no, I'm gonna show you I can have sex or or smoke weed, and it's not gonna affect everything. But in general, I mean, yeah. <coughs> I think it does. Just from my own experience. Can you I'll, can you try to find something about a study or something just so we yeah. can fucking nerd out about it? Because that, that is kind of interesting. But I am much less aggressive <coughs> when I'm high. Well, yeah, for so sure. It's yeah. definitely got a factor in there, even if it's just mentally and not really bringing down your testosterone. I'm just curious if it does. Because you, you, they're definitely, I remember some study going around or some article. I don't know if it was fake or not a million years ago. It was like that it gives you uh, man tits. There was something going about around that. about how weed contributes to man tits, and I don't, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's true, or, but I'm not sure. I don't know if it actually affects your testosterone because the biggest I ever was uh, over 2020, like biggest in the gym, mm -hmm. uh, I was smoking weed every day, all day, and you were and still getting the, your gains. I on. was, I was big. Okay. I got up to 217. I was fucking jacked. <sighs> that's strong. That's, that's like 20 pounds more than I am right now. Dude, that's that's big. 27 pounds more than I am right now. That's now crazy. I don't smoke weed every day. I only weigh 190. That's the, the staying up late. Wait, the that's staying out till four and five a.m. The sleep is huge for weight gain mm -hmm. and weight loss and stuff like that. I feel like. yeah. But um, the the other thing too, probably the weed. I wonder if you're bigger too when you're smoking weed because like you know when you're working eating at, more. Yeah, you're work. You're eating more. So it's like, but like. And if you're working out super tough, you're also getting the munchies, basically. Because, like, nobody ever talks about that. That, like, the harder you work out, like, yeah, weed gives you munchies, but fucking working out gives you munchies. Like, that, like, dude, there was, like, a time when I wasn't, I was just, like, trying to, was like, I need to lose weight. I used to be, like, 230. Like, a big, pretty bigger guy. Oh, really? Yeah. I used to be thick a fatter, boy. a thick, fat boy, but uh, uh, never fat enough to, like, be a fat guy, which kind of sucks. Like, if you're going to be fat, like, I want to be, like, a fat fuck. You know what I mean? Like, like I want to be like a big you can fat do all guy. All your jokes about that, dude. I, dude, honestly, we're the we're at a disadvantage. Hey, if you're dude. halfway attractive in this fucking game, you're at a disadvantage, dude. Hey, being fat and ugly is funny, dude. It, it it's is just dude. inherently funny. It is. There's something funny about but, that guy. But uh, but like when I was like lifting and like uh, but mainly doing cardio stuff because I was like, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. So I just run, 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 run on the treadmill and shit. I was just. It's a cycle where you just eat and run and eat and run and you don't get you don't your body just gets kind of bigger like like you're building muscle and mm -hmm. and then you're just eating and eating and eating and it's like it's so much harder to control the eating i feel like when i'm running all the time are you still a big fitness guy you always in the gym i always see you still always in the gym i've just fell off on the uh diet mm. just, i need to eat a lot because naturally super skinny if i didn't work out or stay on my diet i'd weigh 160 pounds I'd be super skinny. Really? Oh, yes. so you're the skinny guy that can't gain weight. Right. So it's the opposite thing. I have yes. friends like that, for sure. I have sure. to stay on top of how much I eat. I need to bring in the calories. Uh, yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I'd be a string uh, bean. A little string bean? Yeah. Interesting. Um, so. You could be a great actor, dude. You could you could lose the weight for those roles, you know? Like if you had to play a cancer patient. Yeah. <clears throat> Who's that guy in The Machinist? Uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Shout out Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. I know he's watching this. He probably is. <laughs> Maybe Fifty Cent the, too. In that all the celebs are all the celebs did. are watching, dude. Was did Fifty Cent lose a bunch of weight? Yeah, he did. He got what to the death's door. He got for a movie. He probably got down one hundred forty pounds for what movie? Some shitty movie. <laughs> Some shitty movie. Nobody watched. <laughs> I never watched it. I saw the pictures. Okay, some studies, what is this for weed? Some studies have found that frequent marijuana use leads to a dramatic reduction in testosterone and thus to ancillary problems ranging from weight gain to infertility. Really? That's what they say. That was 2014. I think they need to adjust their studies. But it's like who funded that I mean, study? Some studies. Where's that coming from? It's so Hot hard life. to trust any of this bullshit. I bet you scroll down and you find one that's like, marijuana actually gives you gains. <laughs> like it's You know, it's like... That was the first thing on Google. That was HCP Live. I don't know what this is, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, there's the there's the quote right there. Uh, research on subject dates back at least four decades. Damn. And then right there, they 
They uh, negate it oh, right there, too. Later that same year, the journal published that... Uh, I'm not a great reader. Uh, the journal published uh, the account of another study by another team led by Jack H. Mendelson, uh, MD, that found no relationship between any level of marijuana use and testosterone level. That fucking Jack doctor. Jack H. Mendelson. Dude, Jack, Jack Mendelson fucks. He fucking smokes weed. He's like, no, nah, bullshit. I fuck and I smoke weed, so I need to figure this out. I'm going to dedicate my life's work to this. I want to know. Are we lowering our testosterone right now? I don't think so. Jack Jack H. Mendelson says no. So among 27 smokers in that three-week study, no statistically significant changes in plasma testosterone levels were observed during and after the smoking period. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's I feel like it's one of those things where it's like smoking weed affects your lifestyle, like whether or not people want to admit it. And more people, I feel like, are susceptible to those effects than other people. Like, like. You and I might be able to smoke weed and still get in the, get into the gym a couple times a week. You know what I mean? But like a lot of people, if they stop smoking weed, they'd definitely be able to get in the gym more. You know? For me, uh, smoking weed before I right before I went in the gym actually helps me get in my own head. I can focus more. I'm not really? thinking about You're not thinking about the reps. Not think Yeah. You know, it's all about the mind muscle connection. You can really focus on the specific body parts. When you're in your own head on the weed, yeah, I'm not worried about texting. I'm not worried about checking Instagram. I'm just high in my own head. It's like the tunnel vision's coming in, just knock the workout out. Do you think that's think? Because <clears throat> for me, when I, when I have that same thing, I'm thinking about other shit and just doing the workout, right? So I'm not. So in a way, it helps me in that way. Like where it, oh, okay. I get when I get in my head of, while I'm working out. That's in my head about like, okay, I got to get to this open mic. I've been working on this joke, or like, we got to get this music done, or I have this photo shoot tomorrow. I'm thinking about all this other stuff. Right when I go in not stoned, I'm more like, you know, one, two, three. Like that's you know that's like all that's going through my head is the is the counts and the and the reps and how heavy this thing is. You know what I mean? But it's like sometimes if I'm able to distract myself with other shit and just robot through the workout you know that sometimes it's better i don't know yeah well maybe you, you can enjoy it more when you're just high and flowing yeah yeah maybe i don't know instead of just <laughs> focusing on the pain like, the i suffer. have to do this i fucking hate this what do you do when you're in the gym dude what's your regimen do you do like are you the guy that does like we're do all right. We're doing arms today. Uh, definitely a lot of arm days, but no, I keep a healthy balance because I do want to live as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't just want to be as big as possible. Okay, so there's a difference. Uh, there absolutely is a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the biggest bodybuilders uh, they die early. Really? Because your heart doesn't know the difference if you're 300 pounds of muscle or 300 pounds of fat. Whoa! Your heart is working just as hard either way. Oh, Harrison's got another thing here. While it's known, the bottom line says earthmed.com. The bottom line, while it's known that THC has detrimental effects on testosterone in animals, these results do not readily apply to humans. And the limited research that has been conducted on human men does not seem to firmly support the theory that marijuana increases or decreases testosterone levels in men. Definitely. You know, there you go. it's just affecting these <clears throat> bitch ass lab rats. It's yeah. Affecting Pussies. Studs like us. Some studs like. <laughs> so keep smoking, chads. My my fellow chads yeah, we out have there. Our answer. Keep smoking before you go to the gym. Uh, Dude, you know what, though? You know what does affect your testosterone level? Fucking junk food shitty yeah. ass food so when mm -hmm. you're fucking how many of those high asses are you know eating hitting the hostess Pizza. hitting the hostess pretty mm -hmm. hard you know what i mean yeah hitting those tasty cakes you're on the you're from the east coast hitting those tasty cakes a little too hard from the gas station are tasty cakes a thing on the east coast that's a east coast thing i never had I never they're like from new that. jersey you never heard of tasty cakes no no it's like uh it's like little debbie's but it's like east mm. coast little debbie's i think Okay, I'm pretty sure. Uh, look up the average. Look up the average lifespan. We're looking shit up on this one. I like this. Zebra this is cakes. no. This is dope. We're looking shit up on. This is our first look that up, Harrison. Uh, this is gonna. This uh, is gonna be. This is gonna be titled "Look That Up, Harrison." This episode. Um, what are What are we looking for? We're looking for average uh, lifespan of male bodybuilders. Well, I mean that's. 
there's a lot of people that I identify as a male bodybuilder <laughs> that uh, are. Not. Are there a lot of them? Definitely. Then also, those guys that just second do curls. second tab transgender bodybuilders. Please, thank <laughs> you. Uh, average, mm. uh, the mean average I'm gonna of guess death was are, 47 years. I'm gonna guess these are IFBB guys. They're like actual top level. The researchers found no significant difference in mortality rates above age 50. Weird. So maybe the younger guys are doing steroids, and maybe that has no, something? No, those guys dying at 47 are definitely on the juice. They're getting, yeah. they're getting too big. That's what I'm saying. Hard. That's yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. Do no. bodybuilders have, or what is the life expectancy? The oldest male bodybuilder is 90? <laughs> Look his ass up. What's his name? He's on Jim my Arrington. Yep. Holy shit. Nah, it's not him. All right, that's a drone. This is an ad. No, he's on his way to the gym. No. It's all right. The EV. <laughs> this, is, this podcast is brought to you by whatever fucking Kia commercial this is. Okay, here we go. Jim says, wait, hang on. The Turn the volume off to Harrison if you can't. The uh, this guy is juiced up. That is for sure. There's no way. Holy he's shit! Well, I mean, when you're that old, you kind of have to be, don't you? Yeah, you have. Ninety-year-old bodybuilder, bro. Yeah, he looks fucking great. A little saggy, but dude is standing <sighs> tall, walking strong. Dude, we are not gonna look like that if we make it to ninety years old, bro. I hope I will. I'm trying to be like Harrison. Whatever his name is. Harrison Schmidt. Ford. <laughs> Damn, dude. He looks old as fuck, and then he gets in the gym. Look at him, dude. He could probably put up more weight than we can. He's Holy shit. Fit as fuck. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you think he smokes weed? He has to smoke some weed. Or he probably like takes tinctures under his tongue or something. Some old people shit. Yep, the CBDs. This jacked fucking guy next to him. That's crazy. All right, now let's look at transgender bodybuilders, dude. That's, I got to see that. I got to see. I got to know what a transgender bodybuilder looks like, which is really just like a bodybuilder. A bodybuilder with, with a bikini on. Yeah, with a bikini, yeah. That's like the first thing that pops up. You ever heard of um, Buck Angel? Buck Angel? No. Yo, so Buck Angel. Oh, dude, he's she is hot. Wait, oh, Holy so is shit. that a so is wait a minute. Was that a was that, that a was that a biological woman definitely, then? Definitely. Definitely some Whoa. Still, still some woman nipples on this guy. I mean, that looks like a fucking straight up hulky man, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> Get it, bro. Look at this one, dude. Oh my goodness. Go to that guy right Jane's there. Jane Marie Janie Marie Croc, dude, shares the unbelievable story. It's like, before it looked like a world's strongest man competitor from uh, Sweden. Now it looks like a buff Rachel Ray. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That's what that's she true. Put the cupcakes dude, down, dude, dude. Pick the dumbbells dude, up. Dude, nobody has I feel like no one has the hardest time transitioning and pulling it off good than like a than a bodybuilder. Cause that's like the that's the most masculine fucking dude. The version of a dude, mm -hmm. right? That's then gonna transition and somehow get like the feminine features they desire, and it's like that's a fucking that's it's gonna be tough. That's a battle, but but you're gonna have Jane to, Jane the Croc Johnson, whatever whatever her name was, she's killing it, dude. You're gonna have to cut out. I wonder day and shoulder day and go straight to yeah. glutes every day. I wonder what the whoa. Well, that that's a IFBB. What is male. IFBB? Um, yeah, International Federation of Bodybuilding. Oh, okay. Duh. <laughs> Jane so, Jane Marie Croc, dude. Click on that picture down in the corner there. Jane Jane Janie? Damn, dude. She's bad as fuck. Come on, dude. You let her fuck. I, I would. I would smash. You would, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like yeah. that. I'm into that. You're I into like, the, are you into big buff chicks? Not big and buff, but I do like chicks with a six pack. I do like really? a girl with okay. the delts popping, some veins in her arms. It's, I do like it's that. It's kind of weird that that's like not normal. Like yeah, that's weird. not normal there's hot not, chick. Dude, like normal not hot even chick a porn is hub nor category for that. <laughs> I fucking searched. I've looked. Write that down, dude. All of them is this one? Of, is this a bit? No. Write that shit down, dude. Should I? They're dude, all write very that down. Weird. Write that down. No, it's all fetish type stuff. Any yeah. Buff chick on porn 
it's a it's like they're wrestling a small guy there's no <laughs> there's no just a good looking dude with yeah. a buff chick it's they're all like choking them out they're on a wrestling mat or in like dude i'm impressed with ring. i'm impressed with just how beautiful the trans bodybuilder was <laughs> just because i i think that is the hardest transformation to make like if you're coming from the meatiest fucking manliest studliest dude and you're like i want to be a hot chick and then it's like, I mean, that's pretty fucking. He, he she fucking did it, dude. Yeah, that respectfully, is respectfully. incredible for a man. Most dudes are yeah. not that big. Yeah, but but then the, then then they somehow put a beautiful face on it. Look at that. He's he, she's the woman she's always wanted to be, dude. Yeah, so that that is a man. I mean, initially, right? A biological yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Look you're at that. Get, you're not getting that chest and shoulders <laughs> if you weren't born a man. That's a thick neck. Look at that. He looks like she looks like an action figure, dude. Just put a wig on. I'm trying to be respectful on this podcast, you know what I'm like saying? That. Okay, um, so let me let oh, me show you something crazy. Right? Oh wait, hang on. I want to finish up one thought. Uh oh, uh, and I want to make a shout out to my buddy Justin uh who watches this who uh he was like, dude, he told me at one point I'm known this guy for I knew that known this guy for like a year at the time and he was my neighbor at like my old apartment building. So we start hanging out, getting mm -hmm. to know each other. He's like, dude, I'm into weird bodies. I'm like, what? <clears throat> like, I'm into weird bodies. Like, my whole feed is weird bodies. Like, anyone with a weird body. And so he's into, like, a weird body. We dude, like, talking. like midgets. From midgets to bodybuilding shit. Like, well, hot bodybuilding shit. Like, he likes the whole range. Little people. They're in everyone's Excuse algorithm. me, little people. They're the bad. hottest chicks on earth these dude, days. Dude, there are some hot. They're killing it on Little Only people fans, out there. Dude, they're killing it. And they're, I feel like they're killing it more on curiosity like people are like i got to see what that looks like no i you know somehow I have i is? somehow have honestly not looked at it yet i, I somehow it, don't know what it looks like yet oh midget i, I don't, uh, uh uh little people porn it's called midget porn on fucking lpp online isn't it they don't nobody calls it little people porn do they do they, I don't is, think any, so. is they anybody think politically i'm writing I also that down don't really i'm writing that, that one down sorry dude down. is anybody is anybody uh politically correctly searching for for midget porn on fucking absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> the little people is gonna be you know it's gonna go straight to some underage oh yeah no you don't want to be typing that in <laughs> no no you, no you can't type that in on no that's like the feds it will show. Chris Hansen midget. will show up at your fucking. Has to be midget. Oh my god, it has to be midget. You're yeah, right. There's a. There's a. No, that's the. Same that's reason, the fucking. You can't type in. You know, colored people. <laughs> destroys. You know. A colored man destroys wife's. You know, cheating wife. It has to be. <laughs> oh big my black god. Guy. Otherwise, you type you in. Imagine? It's gonna be some cosplay shit. It's gonna be somebody painted blue if you type in colored <laughs> right. people. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's gonna be the cartoon porn. Somebody's into that. It's gotta be. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Nobody's that is typing crazy. in African American in Pornhub. That is weird how the porn that somebody's had to You don't want to see an African American it. cock. You want to see, see a, a big black. black cock. Dude, I'm fucking writing all I'm using all this, dude. Sorry. You can you you can write you up how, you use some you need to write down or you already wrote it down that there's not we a both, porn category for you. We both got ourselves a porn joke. Yeah, right? dude. I've never had a porn joke. It's my first porn joke, dude. Are you have proud I of me? You're like, I, I remember my first That's porn joke. That's a step in your comedy career. You have to hump the stool at some point. <laughs> Fuck. Have you, hump, Every, have you humped the I stool? I used to hump the stool. What was the bit? Uh, about uh, fucking a uh, troll. I was so drunk and I went home and I had to pay the toll to, and, and I didn't have any money. And then I uh, paid the troll toll and then it turns out it wasn't a troll at all. It was just a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. What the fuck was the punchline of that? It was uh, something about bend her over the bed, and she didn't bend it the way she hunched at the back. And I'm like, <laughs> am I good. about to fuck Quasimodo? Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's pretty good. I ran good. that bell tower. You should bring that. You should run that back. You stopped doing uh, that one? I stopped doing that a long time ago. Uh, it's never too late to bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. Bring it back, dude. Work it into your back. fucking, there's not a category for me, because I like fucking buff chicks. That's mm -hmm. awesome, mm -hmm. but isn't that that is weird though? How, uh, how, like the ideal like female stomach for most most dudes is, uh, like a flat, not too much, not too little, not too much muscle, not too much body fat. I would say it's for weird. The average dude, it's even 
not as good as that. It's I would like say a it's little like more thicker, pudge. little thicker. Yeah, yeah. I've seen plenty of memes on Instagram. Really on my algorithm. It's like they got that the front little, not a fupa, but just yeah, a little, just a, a bump, pooch. a little bump. What do they call it? Pooch pouch. I don't know. I don't think you're supposed they to call it like, any of that, dude. <laughs> There's a dog down yeah, there. Yeah. Dude. It's a fucking we got yeah. a bulldog in there. Yeah, write that shit. What do they call that thing, dude? I don't need to write it all down. Write it all down, baby. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> write that down dude write that down so uh yeah they like a little thicker your average dude definitely would i like a chick with a six-pack not like that man <laughs> okay let me let me tell you about something you yes. don't know about yeah there's a porn star named buck angel oh yes buck angel back to buck Angel. now this is a biological female when you when he pulls up a picture you're gonna think that it was a man that had bottom surgery but this is a chick that took so much juice that now she looks like. But but this. but she is now a he. So it's a transgender bo- porn star, bodybuilder, transgender it's porn a, star. Used to be a woman, is now a man. That's Buck Angel right there. This Whoa, man, dude. That that just looks like a straight up like a regular ex, dude, like an ex meth head that yeah, really he, got in the gym, got his life together. In jail, you yeah, know? yeah. Holy shit, Buck Angel, dude. Ten years on some uh, drug charges. He had to join the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> so To survive? To survive. you got. Are you, you just do. making up this, or is this the story you're making up, or is this really happening? That happen? part I was making up. Okay. Uh, it's but, a good backstory, but this though. looks like a man. You take those pants off, straight puss. No way. Yes. Dude. That's kind Full of a beard. Pa- bald head. That's kind of a power move, is it not? Yeah. That's kind of a power move, dude. And he just, you know, he's got video. I've to have the most desirable male body and then have the most desirable genitals <laughs> yeah, as well. Exactly. The world's most desired genitals. Exactly. Like everyone I wants to see a pussy. Nobody could. wants to see a picture That's of a, a big, dick. Nobody wants to see a clit. dick. That's a hairy clit on this You one. think? You think there's hairs growing out nah, of it? There's, there's got to be hairs growing out of everywhere. Does, the st- does steroids make clits bigger? For sure. Yes. That for sure is a thing. Absolutely. See, I don't know anything about it. Absolutely. I don't know what makes clits bigger. Testosterone will make your clit bigger. You can go down there and thumb wrestle with some <laughs> thumb <laughs> <girl. laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> you shout out, shout out. we're just in, in yeah, the you're locker trying, room you're just big trying text to... right now. Yeah. <laughs> dude, shout out to Buck Angel. Dude, I want to meet Buck Angel. Be a good I wonder podcast, what I wonder yes. what Buck Angel thinks about Ty Rivera. In Ty Rivera's point of Buck view, I think Buck Angel uh, likes Ty Rivera. I I imagine I so. Friends. I imagine so. I love Ty Rivera, dude. I'm I'm a big Ty fan. He's the man. He's the coolest. He's the only man I ever stayed up till 8 a.m. with and didn't let him butt fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to. Holy shit! He did. Did he? Was he trying to get it? Was he trying to nah, turn you? No, no. He's super cool. He doesn't. Put, he obviously knows I. Not I mean, so it, he doesn't push it wouldn't it, be uncool of him to try he, to turn he you. Would, it's just he's he just, would if that, I was down. It wouldn't be uncool of him to try to turn you. It would be it would be uh, it would be respectable. I'd be like, like if he was like, I'm gonna fucking. I think I could turn Zach Black. I saw how he looked at my ass when I turned around. I think I could. I think I could turn old Zach Black. I I do like Ty Rivera's body and and turn <laughs> Obje- objectively. Hey, dude, he, me too. He's, he's got a good he, looking. He's good looking. Guy. He's in good shape. He's in good shape. Yeah, I've seen him Kinda post. Some, I've seen him post some gyms. Some, very ripped. Some ab pictures, dude. Very ripped. Yes. He makes me look like a fucking chubby ice cream eating, and I'm I am, but he, you know he's he's, in the he's gym. ripped. Yeah, ties ties the man. Has he not gotten like way better too? And since like in the last like two months, like I've been watching him now for like six months, probably a couple times a month, just at either a mic or at a uh, like showcase I, I go i pay and go to a lot of con- i go like buy tickets to, like a fucking fan yeah but uh, yes yes he's gotten better but he was good before he yeah just, for sure but i just mean like things lined up okay just the climate we're in the social yeah. climate his material it's i didn't mean that like he wasn't for, awesome yeah. before but just that like i've noticed that it's like oh shit like he when he go i saw him on at mothership i saw i went to david lucas's special special taping mm-hmm. and david lucas had him on first which is awesome Ty and is on uh, fire right now he was on he was fucking dominating the room <clears throat> He says and then, what and you're it, not supposed to say. Right, and, it, and it was perfect. exactly it was, what they want. It was perfect to, for him to go up right before David Lucas comes up 
because like now that we're getting getting back to what we started the podcast talking about like the lineup thing and yep. how that matters mm -hmm. because he totally like level like you said said all the shit that like you're not supposed to say so he took that fucking wall and just just leveled it and so anything anybody could be saying anything right now and then david came up and like you know he has some ridiculous shit that he says but he didn't even sound as he didn't even say as bad as shit as fucking some of the shit ty was saying you know what i mean and mm -hmm. so it was like he that was awesome dude and th that was a g great example of what we we're talking about earlier about how like who you, who their you put. styles are a lot different. Ty talks very fast, yeah, totally very loud, and then David he goes up there, chill, yeah, super chill. Yeah, I've noticed that with some of these guys that uh, that's their approach. Yeah, I wonder what they're thinking in their head, like when they're being super chill. Like I wonder if they're ever like, if they have this ma this master this ability to look chill when they're not. They have to have, have, right? I think like they if have. they're going up in front of a giant, like because David Lucas may be the chillest of of deliveries mm -hmm. right but he goes up in the fucking massive like theaters and shit opening up for who at tony or doing his own shows and it's like so there's got to be just because i know what it's like to be at a big show and it's like fuck there's a lot of people like i know i'm gonna kill it, but god damn there's a lot of people in this room and it's like there's got to be some butterflies in there like even though he's like yeah What's up? You yeah, know, it's like how do you do? How do you do both? How do you act fucking chill when you're freaking the fuck out and say just turn it on? That's part of the act. Yeah, I think it's yeah. part of the art of stand up. You know, it's all a show. And yeah, anytime you're doing something new, you know, when you're at the next level, when you've never done theater, now you're in a theater. Yeah, those that nervousness is definitely gonna kick. Have in. you done a theater show? No, no, I've never done theater. No, no, that shouldn't be surprising. I guess. I guess nobody nobody's taken me with them to a theater. It's crazy how long the comedy road is. I mean, not really though, because it's just as crazy as the band road. It's pretty much just as crazy. Yeah. So it's just like the performing arts road is just a long road. I think with the stand up, it comes quickly. It's a long road, and then it all happens at once. Because you see these people, when it starts to pop off, it goes high quickly. That's. So that's what the years of grinding in the beginning, that's where that pays off. Because you got to be ready when it happens. <coughs> you Interesting. Got, you got to have enough material. You got to have had enough experience, enough stage time. <coughs> I've seen that with a couple people now. It'll go from regular life and then something pops off and then life is just different. Because as long as you can ride the wave, there's, no, there's you're not going to fall back down. As long as you, you know, you put in the work at the beginning and you can back it up, you can... Once it pops off, you can stay up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't do some criminal shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, people these days they're they're pretty good about handling it. Yeah. Unless they have got a hardcore. Well, alcohol but that's kind of like. But but the only time that doesn't work out, and I've I've only I'm only saying regurgitating shit that I've heard other comics talk about on podcasts is like the guys will blow up from the the TikTok clips, mm -hmm. and then they won't, and then they'll be they'll be TikTok famous, like they're making money off sponsors and TikTok mm -hmm. and all this, and then they book like a theater tour, and then they go and do stand up, and it's like they're not good at it because they don't ha right. Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. Totally a thing. Okay, I work at Vulcan, and I've seen it many times. Oh, you've <laughs> seen it. There's, yeah, yeah. So you've seen these TikTok guys come through and try to be on tour, and I've they probably it. sell out, right? The show's I've sold seen out it from a bunch of different ways. Sometimes the ticket sales don't translate. They'll be big on Instagram or TikTok, and they still don't sell any tickets because these people that follow them are not comedy fans, so they don't buy the ticket. But then I've also seen it where they are huge, and they do sell out, and then they can't back it up, and it's pretty it's pretty bad. Like the mm -hmm. feature. That's the, almost worse, right? Sometimes that's worse. The features are the funniest comedian because. The they're headliners are, or they are grinding. <clears throat> they're doing the best shit they've ever written, and they only have to do 10, 15 minutes. You know, yeah. When you got to do a full hour, they can't be as many punchlines. You got to stretch the material out a little bit more. You know, yeah, absolutely. So the, the features really crush. You know what's funny about here. that? You, he, ha, hearing you say that, excuse me, is I feel like, like, don't you think that there's kind of a negative, like even uh, I think it's like. I don't think it's it's justified, but don't you think sometimes there's like a negative connotation or a negative vibe from like hardworking comics when there's like, well, oh, this guy's just a fucking TikToker, that right? There's like a whole thing, right? Like a stigma. 
about like I the TikTok that. guy, right? Like people talk shit about that. Yeah, I hear a lot of it. People talking shit, but but I'm when you not think one about to it, fall into that. <laughs> if I see someone sold a lot of tickets and they're doing just fine yeah. on stage, I respect the fuck out of it. Right, that's how I feel. Oh, I've hear it all the time being in the club from maybe not even necessarily comedians it's just people that work in the club too other there's other people that work in there and not just all comedians uh -huh. like, this guy sucks i'm like well this room is full and everyone's laughing and we're so getting what, paid. Ex what exactly about them sucks <coughs> right yeah even if it's not for you i yeah. can still respect it there's plenty of comedians i've seen it's sorry not, it's, it's not, not david tell you know but yeah. it's like there's plenty of comics that are not for me but i still respect what they've done i can look at it objectively yeah. I, I look at stuff like that more than ever now, like having done it. See, they're clearly I was such doing a, something right. I was such a fan for so long, and then I started trying it recently, and mm -hmm. it's like I definitely look at everyone. I'm like, every time someone goes up, I'm like, all right, what's this person's like fucking? It's fun. It's like you don't know what their angle is on on life. Like what's your, you know what I mean? And oftentimes you're kind of let down. That's okay. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like got to open my, you know what I mean? With it's always the best when they surprise you, too, and you think they're going to talk about one thing, and then they're just down a whole different lane. I like right. that the most. Yeah. Probably. Even, you know, Tyra Vera again. Got tattoos on his face. Yeah. And then he's, cause he's gay. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't expecting it. Yeah. When he opens his mouth, it's like a misdirect. Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa, I yeah. thought you were a biker. Yeah. You know? exactly. <laughs> like, I thought you were in a gang. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Um. But yeah, what I was gonna say is like I feel like, I feel like yeah, Ty Rivera. Shout out Ty, dude. I love Look it. I love that. Ty Rivera. Early two thousand. Oh my god, the old Ty there. Rivera, dude. Dude, he was a scene kid. I love now. that. He is so much more handsome now, dude. Yeah, I like I'm it. Like an older man. He might be my one of my favorite comics in town. He said he was gonna come do the podcast too. I don't know when, but he'd be a great guest. I would love to. I would love to learn more about this guy. Um, but uh. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, the TikTok thing, like, it seems like from what you're saying, if you've seen, like, a fucking local guy or, like, a feature act just crush, it, it's like everybody's leaving that show going, man, I really like him on TikTok, but that was that was a shitty show. That guy before him, though, right? So you're getting all these, like, you should we should almost be, I say we, but it's like, you know, the, the, the younger comics should be, like, tr hoping that more of those people pop off on TikTok, try to sell tickets and then eat shit like come fill the venues up for us that's yeah. a, that's a perspective twist that's yeah. like a that's a mindset change right there is like i feel like it's like no 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 keep blowing up on TikTok and trying to sell out fucking comedy clubs so that you can fill the room yeah, so that zach feature. black so that ty rivera can go and show all these people what what it's you know like Real somebody is. yeah dude and then destroy and then all those people are in the car going you know man so and so from TikTok, you know i'm keep following on TikTok. they kind of suck live but that guy right before him was fucking awesome dude what was his you know what i mean it's like that's the way to go you always want to show up the headliner so if those are just opportunities to show up the headliner people should be less bitter and like mad that you know what I mean. That's what it is. It's a healthy balance. Yeah. You don't necessarily always want to show up the headliner, but you want to do your yeah. best. You're bringing True. it every time. Nobody's pulling back. No comedian is pulling. Not back. here. No, <clears throat> not in Texas. Not in Austin. It yeah. is. Yeah. What are the shows like in San Marcos? Because I've heard you you've said some some positive things about the. Yeah, I mean, well, the one I run is all college kids. It's a college town, mm -hmm. Texas State down there literally right around the block from the venue i'm at it's all 22 to nice. 24 25 hot crowds like just people ready to they laugh they love the comedy yes yeah yeah these kids nice. are wild a lot of them come to the show every time I've done it you know it's monthly now they'll oh, come it's they like come the to ritual now yes dog hell yeah <laughs> that's what you need that's what you want hell yeah. yeah and then they'll come down to austin come in vulcan sometimes they recognize me and they're like yeah you're the guy from wildfire i'm like they I still am. don't know your name you're that fucking guy dude that puts all the other good comics on dude no, yeah <laughs> what is super because i have a show at uh, east siders too so one yeah. day i'm taking out the trash in the back alley literally throwing bags into the dumpster and some group of guys walks by they're like Hey, we just saw you last night at East Siders. And I'm like, yep, long way from the top. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you're funny. I'm like, way thank you. To the top, if you want to rock. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. 
Are you looking? Are these more weed and working out facts? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Oh, sorry. I was Apparently, still, I was it was still... your test shot. You got the skinniest man. All right, you have to read this one, Zach. I don't want to read okay. anymore. Whole cannabis and THC have been shown to alter cardiovascular function at rest during submaximal and during submaximal exercise, most typically by increasing their heart rate. Okay. So is that a positive or negative thing? Well, if you're trying to lose some weight, maybe getting your heart rate up would be good, but or you're going to have a heart attack when you're bench pressing. Such as predictions of maximal exercise and performance and response may inaccurately reflect demand at submaximal intensity. So you can't be as intense, but your heart rate's going faster. Doesn't sound good. <laughs> doesn't doesn't sound like it would. So you're like you. you're like fuck. This is heavier than the last time, and your heart's going. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. You're thinking about dumb shit you said in 08. Mm -hmm. You know, or you're you're thinking about oh fuck, I should embarrass myself in front of that girl. I think it's it's I think it's probably a small factor either way. I think if you're in the gym, you can the smoke as much weed as you want. I feel like the problem is, and from what I know, and which is very little about most things, but from what I know about like controlled studies and like random randomized controlled studies and stuff, there's too many types of people that smoke weed. That's the problem with finding out anything about this so yeah, you've got everybody smokes weed yeah so you can so you, you can do the lazy fat people they're smoking weed too right. just like the jacked buck angel guys yeah and, dude. You know, ladies with <laughs> yeah dude big delts you yeah know, they're all everybody smoking weed dude i can i can see your rock hard right now talk thinking about girls with big delts dude i do like that i don't know if you would have been into buck angel pre-transition dude you would have been into Probably. old to young young buck angel Probably. Yeah. You like that. Can we get a young buck angel up there? <laughs> how, hot, how hot was she when it was still a woman? Yeah, how hot was young buck angel? I'm going to guess that buck angel started very early. I We life. need to find out if you'd that's be into lifelong. young buck angel, dude. Oh, that's young buck angel. Right there. <laughs> oh, my God, look. <laughs> Looks a lot like Ty Rivera. Young buck angel. No disrespect, Ty Rivera. I love you. You're the fucking man. Can't believe I'm looking this up. Yeah, no, no disrespect to to the. Is that Ty Rivera is the the next okay, goat? Okay, looks like um, Rose Nama Nunez. Exactly. Nice. I knew what you were thinking. Absolutely. On that one. Yeah, it looks like totally. Rose Nama Nunez. I would totally. She kind of looks to like chick. pink in that almost. You know, like the like pink the, the 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 music artist. Yeah. Oh, oh, that pink. Yeah. I, know. I mean, like her skin doesn't look pink as long time. She just looks like pink. The woman pink. Damn, so I you would have talking about you Nicki Minaj. Album. You would have been all about fucking <laughs> totally would have talked to a young Buck Angel. Well, you know that 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 person is still is still there somewhere, you know. You could still be into Buck Angel right now if nah, you would put it aside, put looks aside. Yeah, hairy chest. Now. <laughs> hairy, You're just like circling possible. around his nipple. <laughs> you know what I mean? Afterwards. Just twisting the hairs up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're hairier than I am, Buck Angel. Probably. Dude. Buck Angel would make you his bitch. <laughs> he couldn't fuck me though. So no, true. Happen. That would be interesting. You would technically he, have he, sex with. You ever Buck done Angel. that position where like the chick pushes be... your legs back? That's how Buck Angel fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. Buck Angel's remarkable. Like the fact that I've never the done fact, that. I can't the fact bring that, myself that people who that. transition can can do whichever to get to wherever they're trying to go with their looks that that well that take is enough hormones wild. and juice i mean i pretty much do anything the human body is just wild imagine what we'd look like if we were taking his levels of hormone replacement we'd be we'd look like ronnie coleman <laughs> dude i don't even know who ronnie coleman is but the way you delivered yeah that you do like, who's ronnie coleman the greatest bodybuilder of all time. I don't know Eight any. I don't Mr. know. Olympia, I, I don't Ronnie know. Coleman. I don't know a single thing about bodybuilding. Okay, dude. this is. Uh, Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> one. Whoa. More, one more Mr. Olympia's than anybody. Dude, Huge. that doesn't look healthy. It's not. No. We found now, that, is now he, he's uh, in a rough spot. He has got. He had many, many surgeries. He. he I think he rides around in a wheelchair. So this is oh so this is a fucking addiction disease mental illness when you want to look like that when you're a bodybuilder addicted to bodybuilding 
He, I think he. Was that's just, a fucking disease. I think he's a warrior, and he was <laughs> that's, dedicated. That's to an it easy at way any for any cost. Yeah, it's not. That's I, an easy way for a for a fat lazy person to like justify not working out, not being a bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Like they're like, oh, that guy's just addicted to working out, and it actually affected his health. Get this picture. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I'm gonna sit on, on the, the couch. bottom right, right here, the full body. Yes. Oh, God. oh it's a it's a statue, but. Never mind. You just you thought that was his junk. You wanted to see his no, steroid not his junk. junk. I wanted to see. Whoa, that. dude! Look at those legs. Huge. Those legs look like That's giant. Our waist. Giant, like like cocoa beans. Have you ever seen a cocoa bean? <laughs> Maybe. You know what I mean? Like a raw, like yeah. In no those look like they look like rock. They look like an, uh, an an egg from like an alien movie. You know what I mean? Like like what is it? You know? And it's like this giant glowing fucking. You ever heard people in the gym like lightweight baby, and no, no, yeah, buddy, no. What is these that? Are, these are sayings in gym the gym terms? that Ronnie Coleman started. Lightweight baby. What does that mean? Like lift light? No, 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 or, no. Oh, like the opposite. Like you're when you have six hundred pounds on the bench press and you're like, this is lightweight baby. Oh, that's Ronnie Coleman. Damn. Huge. So is he, so he is still alive. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um. Yeah, he's he's struggling right now. A lot of surgeries, dude. He lifted a lot of weight. Yeah. It fucked him up. <sighs> he pushed it pretty far. You gonna look like that one day? No, I'd like to. You want to look like that? Fuck yeah! Look at that picture of his back. <laughs> Down <bottom> there! Right. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> look at that! Holy yeah, I want to look shit, like that. Dude. Who doesn't? Wow. Not much funny about that. You kind of just get paid to flex because you look so ridiculous at that point. You just get paid to just. Dude, uh, let's look at Arnold in his prime because Arnold had a crazy physique that I don't think we've really seen since. Now, that would be more, you know, mainstream attractive. Is that know? juice? I think most How much people juice are... was Arnold on? Oh, uh, he was on everything. Uh, the most amount of everything. Whoa. Yeah. You can't get that without being juice to the gills. I would. How much did he weigh? Like two sixty five. Um, like how I big think that was, was he? him in his peak when he competed? He was probably about two forty. So you're big into the bodybuilding thing. Like yeah. you're a nerd about the bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. I'm sort of, super okay. skinny right now. I that used to be a big part of my life. Okay. I'm literally. I love bodybuilding. Now you're just I've soft. Been to, I've been to some shows. You're fucking soft. I am. Out here eating Philly oh, cheesesteaks. Two thirty five on stage. Two sixty off stage. Oh, so before the weight cut. This was back in 68. Well, that was his debut. So he would, cut, he would cut that weight? He would cut 25 pounds or whatever? Yep. Shred all the body or huh. uh, the water weight. Oh, okay. Because is it about – so with bodybuilding, is it about like your – The bulking and the cutting is a big factor. So you want to bulk up and get as big as possible. You need to be fat too. You need to have some more body fat on you to hold more muscle. Nobody can stay that lean for a long time. Oh, you cut down a couple weeks, well, several weeks, but really cutting down right before the show. Get rid of all the water, all the fat. And so basically they're shredded. judging people off of how big they can be at the lightest, like at the least amount of body fat. Yeah, it's there's many factors. There's different uh, ways of scoring. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. So, yeah, overall, you, you know, physique. Oh, I've hit that. Okay. Yeah, it's the shape, too, and symmetry. Those are all factors. You can't just be the biggest. You want to have a tight waist. On shape? The they base them on shape? The ratio's big. Tiny waist, that's most important. Really? The smaller your waist, the better. So these handles, would, these handles wouldn't cut it right here, That's dude. big in bodybuilding. These you handles. Want a small waist. Yeah, and, you know, um, I forget the words. But basically, Circumference? How, how much, no, how much water you're holding. Oh, your vascularity. Vascularity is a thing too. Yeah, but that's just. Vain. Will you look that's up? Will you look up the ju for. what's what they judge like the judging points? What would you call that? The judging points of bodybuilding or like the judging it, criteria? Yeah. Bodybuilding judging criteria. Dude, Arnold was such a hot boy. Look at that fucking young man. All right, you have to read this one. Muscularity. Too. So they judge based on. Symmetry. There's a symmetry. Symmetry and muscularity balance front to back and side to side. Wait, what's what does that mean? 
that's your symmetry is one bicep bigger than the other <clears throat> bicep is your chest even all the way across. holy shit they measure abs it. will be you know a lot of people <laughs> one side of their abs is higher than the other you want it to be perfectly symmetrical. Whoa. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about that. Muscle, I thought it was just like how good they looked or something. Like, you know what I mean? Did, just they how really, much muscle they have on them. How big are they? No, it's, symmetry is big too. That's fucking wild. So yeah. you better be getting your one, two. You better be getting like the same amount so one's not off from the other because yeah. you'll get dinged on that. Yeah, or you even want to do more reps on, one, on your weaker side to get, get to match your stronger side. Right. Not oh, just, so you'll not have a guy come in and exactly measure you six reps with each arm. Yeah, they get their. So they get pre-measured though, like while they're getting ready to compete, and somebody comes in and it's probably like an old guy from little tiny guy from New York, and he's like he has a little long. He's like your left side is. Yeah. Your left side is not as good as the right side. You're gonna need to. That now they can lay in this like. Uh, like a iso, what's it called? The hyperbaric chamber. Oh, the and float it, tank thing. Float tank thing, and it um, what does that measures do? them perfectly. It's not that exactly. Oh, they, but they can... get in a machine and it measures your whole body perfectly oh. with scanners and computers and. That's fucking crazy. Your body fat and bones. So muscle and mass proportion condition. Condition. That's what. What does that mean? That's just like this. How basically how much water you're carrying? If when you flex, you know, if it's like just round instead of shredded you can't see the definition in the muscle the separation from your shoulder to your bicep and tricep that's the condition oh you know what's funny everybody just says like man yeah those bodybuilders they're really like sculpting the human body and i think people just say that and think that but they're they literally are. fucking have to it's like they're making their body a work yeah, of the art symmetry is big that's so crazy did you know that am i just an idiot you didn't know that all right, Harrison's pretty smart about sports. So if, if Harrison doesn't okay, know Okay, and the final thing, they're also judged on their posing execution and overall stage presence. So you have to be a fucking you dog, to too. You have to be a fucking dog. They, have to, they all have a choreographed If you get up there and you're a fucking nerd. Yeah, you can't just go Get out of here. It's a whole flow. It's got to look smooth, especially with the women. That's a big part. They do a lot of things. They'll do, you know, cartwheels up there it's a whole performance now that now that we've broken it down i before i was like you're crazy if you watch this like if you pay to be there like and but now i'm kind of like now that i know all this stuff kind of goes into it it's kind of like an it's kind of like a human it's like ballet well it's like a human jacked people yeah yeah it's like it's like a human art show slash yeah you know performance where they have to do something that makes them look look cool you know because they're judged on that that's kind of crazy what is this? Men's physique side pose criteria? One hand on the hip. <laughs> so this is the board short Either category. foot place forward. This is the what? These are board shorts. There's there's the, um, what's it called? The different the divisions different, are shorts? There's different categories, yeah. There's what? Different divisions. Why? Oh, because yeah. because if you're in the board men's shorts. open bodybuilding, like those huge guys, Ronnie Coleman, that's like open bodybuilding. That's, that's your whole body? Possible. Oh, this, there's another category where the guys wear the board shorts. Yeah, look at look at and the last they, thing they on the list. Shit on. Bodybuilding poses not allowed and will be scored down. Mm -hmm. What? <clears throat> they pose like this models. goes so deep. They pose like models. They're not doing most muscular pose. Hey, yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, the women they have even more categories because they have open bodybuilding and they have physique and they. So have this bikini. is bikini criteria. Yeah, yeah. See, this is read what it would to Traditionally, us. be read the bikini criteria That's for the back pose. <clears throat> feet shall be placed at or inside shoulder width. Heels may be together or feet may be crossed. Okay, lats flared Wait, what? slightly. I don't know. They want your feet between oh your you shoulders. can't Even spread her, your you in can't this picture her feet are definitely wider than her shoulders so they don't want you doing the splits is what they're saying you keep that shit in the bikini mm -hmm. don't be don't be trying to sway the judges by like, showing a little lip <laughs> exactly okay don't be showing don't be don't be showing lip to try to that to try to spread to try to no, sway the, looks like to clear a winner yeah right it there. looks like cassandra <laughs> is the fucking underdog of this one all right, lats flared slightly <laughs> forward, hair to the front, making the back visible. Hands can be placed on hips or quads. Slightly tilting forward to strike hamstrings is allowable. Bending over is not allowed and will be. Damn. 
you can slightly tip forward, but you cannot just bend. You can't. Over. You can't put apple bottom jeans on and fucking get after it. You can't. You can't really fucking. You can't bend at the waist. You can't shake your money maker for the judges. You can't no twerk competition. This is yeah. Damn, they're so they're so buttoned up, dude. They need like a punk rock bodybuilding competition where people fucking don't give a shit and they're like fucking pull your pussy they out. Could, we don't care. They should do that. You know, like a stripper, a of, like a stripper about, bodybuilding competition, like bodybuilders that are also strippers. Just who has the best body, not who right. can pose the best and most. Symmetry. That's crazy that the and that was just for the back pose. Mm. So there's like even more criteria for each criteria. Each pose has a different criteria. That's crazy. I'm not that into it. I, I know, but it goes deeper than I would like to go together. Right I know, but now. this is no, I know I'm not even at, I'm, at this point. I'm just making statements here. Mm-hmm. That's that I who would have thought I don't think anybody that watches this will I think everybody will agree that we thought you pretty much just go up there and fucking flex and look like, and the, show off your guns. The women have to have fake tits. This is turning you on that for sure. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know how many chicks that, that look like that that I follow on Instagram? <laughs> how many sad nuts you've dropped to fucking, yeah. to fucking pictures many, like this, dude? How many unanswered <laughs> DMs have gone to a chick that oh looks my God, just really? like that? You're the creepy guy that's like, hey, hey, baby, how was your day? And it's just like I a bunch. Of, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm just like, you know, the guy where it's like no replies, no replies for like six months. The real creepy guys are on their Instagram coming like, this looks like a man. They yeah. have to deal with that all the time. Oh, They're, I bet. The haters hating on those type of girls. Interesting. Like, you look like a man. I'm like, bitch, you uh, you look more like a fat, ugly woman. <laughs> you're, you're, like, you, this chick. you're like, she is perfect. Okay? Yep. You watch your mouth. She's a perfect <laughs> I'm woman. I'm replying back to that. That is a perfect. Yeah, you're the guy. You're the, you're, you got like a. I'm you, fighting for them. You have a simp account, like a secret simp account with like the gray, like face, like default picture. And you're just going around commenting like, you don't say that. Her body is perfect. Her body is you perfect. Shut you mouth. shut your mouth. They don't even have a porn category for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got to follow them on Instagram. I can't just exactly. look it up on Pornhub. My buddy that I was talking about. Uh, uh, he would sh- always show me like funny pictures, like like pictures. He's like, dude, check this out. And it's just like this bodybuilder rip chick. And I'm like, dude, I'm not into that. You're into that, but it was it was like like almost like haha. I'm into this. He would send me stuff too. He's funny. That's it was so good. <laughs> the, the competition is called the MPC. <laughs> yeah, that's the. Um... Fucking board shorts competition. It's so weird. Yeah, those guys don't train legs. So when are you gonna get back to when are you gonna get back to uh, lifting weights like that, dude? Or do you, are you happy <laughs> with are you I, happy with where you're at now? Or do you look no. in the mirror and you're like, I fucking hate this. Too skinny. You're too skinny. Yeah, yeah. Or not defined enough. No, I'm defined. Okay. I'm fucking, no. I'm fucking jacked. Excuse me, sir. I'm jacked. I'm too skinny. Excuse me, sir. I'm defined. I'm jacked. I like to be. Bigger. You're wearing a baggy shirt, so I don't know. I'd like to weigh. Take your shirt off. I definitely nice. like to weigh two ten. I only weigh one ninety. I feel I felt good when I weighed two ten. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. so weird. That was I'm, I've I've always been be. like a fatter guy, like a bigger guy, so I've always wanted to weigh less. Two ten's good. Not that I wouldn't want to be bigger, but you know that's. Dude, when I'm two ten, I look like shit. I look fat at yeah, 210, but but it's like, well, yeah, not obviously I've never been a Jack 210. I'm going to get back there because I just uh, moved to South Austin. I was, you know, up north and Pflugerville. Pflugerville. Yeah. And Pflugerville. so now I'm pretty close to on it. You know, on it. Yeah. Are you going to work out there? I am. No way. Yeah, yeah. How much does that cost? I've always uh, been curious expensive. about that. It's expensive. Like There's 200 different levels bucks a month or what? Uh, the cheapest membership level is 180 a month. Okay, that's not as bad. And you can as still get open gym plus uh, group classes. You still get group classes for the 180 a month. Uh, when you go to the next level up is 300 a month. That's uh, you get some personalized training, and then they do a lot of different stuff there. For a right? thousand a month, you oh get a God, personal a trainer. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do the 180. Yeah, know, slide in there. I've taken one group class there so far. <clears throat> it was it was months ago. I just wanted to check out on it. And it was good. I had a great workout. It's yeah. a lot more motivating when you're in the group. When and w- yeah, you're, really, you're like, okay, I'm gonna be here at whatever time you sign up for the class. I'm gonna be here at 9 a.m. and we're doing it. Because when you just work out by yourself, you know, it's a lot looser. Yeah, you can slack off. 
You know, if you oh, don't yeah. have the motivation that day or get to the gym an hour after you plan. You have, have to tell to yourself, don't be a bitch, like, throughout the fucking mm -hmm. thing. To, like, yeah, it's tough it. to do that every day. It is. You can tell yourself not to be a bitch often. Once a month? Easy. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, twice a week? Well, Easy. Say but, it. like, every yeah. day while you're lifting heavy shit? Hard. Exactly. Tough. Exactly. Yeah. But then when you sign up for the group class, you have to. Yeah, That's otherwise you'll commitment. look like a bitch in front yeah, of everybody, and you're a not your commitment. That's interesting. That is interesting. I've never done a group class really. I mean, like when I was young, my mom used to like take me to workout classes with her, like uh, yoga classes. Like I would go to the gym, and I think they were trying to get me to play racquetball for a while because my dad played racquetball, so mm -hmm. I play racquetball, and then we and then we do like a yoga class as a family. You know, what I mean? yeah, like I was the lucky YM at the that. YMCA, and I ba I basically had to do it, like. Sounds like fun now, but like I'm like I wish I was playing Final Fantasy right now. Why the fuck are we at the gym for three and a half hours? That's good though. It is good. I'm glad they made me. Do I was that. lucky. I'm glad that they made me do that. Both my mom and stepdad worked out, so it was like they were working out like almost. It was every, like always part day. of your it was, life. It was a part of the house. Yeah. Yeah. They had the weight room in the basement. My stepdad showed me how to work out. I'm glad I got that. I want to work now. out with you sometime. Let's go. I'm like. Go down to on it. I like real. I have. I I want to do. I want to get jacked. Not like too ridiculously jacked, but I want to get like a little little more jacked than I am now. And and I just and I I have. I know I have what it takes. It's just a getting in there laziness thing. You know what I mean? And like it's right now. It's like two three times a week, and it would just all I need to do is watch what I eat and do four to five times a week and go harder while I'm there. You know what I mean? And I just, that is all you need to do. Yeah. You got a good body. You could be jacked. I like it when you say that to me. Dude. You do. Have, I do like it. With, like pl like platonically, I like it when you say that. <laughs> you got a good I body. Mean it. You, you got do. a great frame. You do. You could be. <laughs> it's hard to say that. bigger than me. It's hard to say that. Not great. Not gay or creepy. To somebody like you got a great body. Like listen, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying not, to fuck yeah, you. Not trying to be sexual here, but you have a great frame. Great body. <laughs> great frame. Great base level right here. Great base. You'd be huge. You've got a great base. You'd be huge. <laughs> Imagine if you got on some TRT. You'd be fucking. Dude, let's go. I, when I'm 40, 40, I'm going to get on TRT. I'm when I'm look. 38, I'm going to get on TRT. When I'm 30, Same. When I, next year, I'm going to get on TRT. Same. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to look like uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., dude. I don't know what Rob Ken looks like. You know? I mean, I know what he looks like. I don't know what I don't know what is what he looks like Jacked. tops off jacked can we get a rob a rob k rk rj rfj rfjk rjfk rjfk robert kennedy no, rk fj rk robert kennedy f robert f kennedy jr rfkj <laughs> dude is same age as biden and he looks like this biden no trips. is yes. he really the same age he's like two years younger He's 69 years old. How old is Biden? Like this, and 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 shirtless. Of this course, shirtless. of course, the dopest, the dopest candidate dude that's not left or right or whatever is like 69 years old. Look speak. at that guy. Whoa, jacked. Holy shit. Dude, that could be for sixty nine. Pretty goddamn good. Not How? just pretty good, better than most people. Dude, I don't even care about the policies. <laughs> What's that? No, I don't care policies. about. I don't care about the policies. I don't even care. Don't I, even show me the policies. This is a leader. That is a I, I'm voting for I this want guy. him. I, that's what America fucking looks like. Exactly. That's what fucking America needs. America looks America like, looks like that, dude. 69 years old. A ripped 69-year-old. Biden is not. Biden's much older than that. No, he's not. Is he? Yes. 78? Harrison. Biden's like 80, bro. No. Biden's deadly old. Biden's geriatric old. Yeah, he trips just walking. 80 okay. years old. Yeah. It said. 80 years old. Oh, okay, you are okay, off okay. base, dude. Hey, well, he's, we need a hot 69-year-old. Dude, 69, nice. Let's nice. go. That should be his campaign, dude. <laughs> you you this country needs a 69-year-old uh uh fucking hot ripped old man president, a young old man. That's what we need. This is what America needs. Doesn't matter. I don't know anything about him or what his policies are or why everybody hates him. I know he didn't like the vaccine. He shaved that <laughs> chest, fucking, that's for sure. Looking that's, like, I was say say, say less. Say less. Going, dude. dude, 
Is that? Oh, that's. Is that him back in the day? What yeah. a fucking stud, dude. He shaved that fucking chest. Dude, he should let that. Once he, if he wins, he should let that rock, dude. Could you imagine? President spotted out with out his... president spotted with the wife and dog out at the beach, and he's just got this oh, roaring like '80s porn chest. That is not Holy him. Shit. That is not him. No, not him. no. this guy looks like him. It's fake altogether, dude. That's that's wild. Biden's not is, doing so. That. What do Trump's you know? Listen, this that. is we don't. I don't like to get political because I know very little about shit. But but do you know? If he can, we are we going to be able to vote for RFK or or is he not? Is he not in the run? Are they going to? Is the DNC is the He's DNC running. people going to like do their thing where they cut all the good people out like they did with Tulsi Gabbard and all that stuff? They like probably. I doubt he'll be the Democratic or the Republican nominee. Is he going to be like He's the Green be, Party He's thing? Going to be some independent. Uh, what was that dude's it, name that wants to get free college? Bernie Sanders yeah, kind of yeah. guy. He's basically in that category, I think. Dude, I I was about Bernie Sanders when I was in, like in 2016, like you know, or whatever. Like back when I was young, when I was a little younger, I was like, this guy, fucking, why not? I'd like to see Trump get back in there myself. Ooh, dude. Put on a red hat again. Dude, that's a hot. That's a hot. That's a hot statement, dude. <laughs> He's got hot. Zach's just Zach Black is throwing out hot white statements, dude. Yep. <laughs> no, gonna, white. Yeah. They're white hot, dude. White hot. I'm gonna Texan. Uh, I'm a Texan now, and uh, you want to wear? You want to bust the red hat out? More Republican. <laughs> dude, you said that like so nonchalant. Like even people that agree are like. You know, like, I mean, it, he's funny. Like, I'd like to have, you know, it's better than Biden or whatever, but it's like nobody's like, I'd like to see Trump get back in there, actually. Like, you know, like like most, most people. The world most was people, a better place when he was in office. I think we can dude, all agree on oh, that. Oh, you're not wrong. 2019 was lit. 2019 was lit. 2019 was lit. I agree. That was my best a good year, dude. Any Could wine from that year? Great but... year. <laughs> great year. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Wonderful year. Great year. 2019. Yep, till Sleepy Joe. Do you think that's a possibility? We're getting like we're getting like dumb oh, it's not dumbass just a politically. You think it's gonna happen? It's gonna happen. You think that they're that they wouldn't do some like sh weird shit to like sway people? Like, do you think they could pull another COVID? Do you think they could pull no. another COVID on us to make it not happen? It's gonna be something completely different. They could pull, but they're not gonna. We've all been through the the election was rigged. We all went through the pandemic. The scamdemic. Yeah. We're done with those. So they, you're like a, need a you're like a full on approach. you're a full on Jan Sixer they need like fucking aliens. Die hard QAnon kind of guy, right? That's why they need this. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> we uh, Dude. One of my family members <coughs> is like <coughs> on that kind of like cult shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's just always like, Well, you know, it's not gonna be a big deal next week when he comes back. You know, and you're like, Jesus, Christ, no, no. Like, I'm all about, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a lib, I'm not a dirty lib, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm also not like a fucking QAnon moron. You know what I mean? And so it's like, there's like, and I'm into conspiracy theories. I got to reload this. I'm into conspiracy theory stuff, but I have like, I have to have one foot in like reality and one foot in like the, I want the most crazy conspiracy over on this side. And then I want to see that and go, oh, maybe. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to be like, okay, but like I'm going to still going to go to I'm going to go to work and like talk have normal relationships with people cuz once you get too far down the rabbit holes, you start turning into a fucking crazy psycho. Yeah, then you know everybody you know, preaching everybody telling yeah. them all your theories on things. Yeah, dude. I've liked a balanced life yeah. in all aspects in the politics too. It just feels natural to me. I just slide right down the middle, you know, and you know, life's tough. We don't need to take one side or the other. There's a lot of uh, issues that are very complicated and not black and white, and everybody wants to – they want the – just like they want to get their DoorDash, their favorite food delivered to their front door, and they want to get their fucking – you know, they want they want uh, sex right now with Tinder, easy, quick quick hookups, and they want, they want shit now. They want Amazon delivered next day prime. Just like they want all that stuff, they want an immediate answer or side to get on for, like, every issue that comes up. And it's like, you guys, like, a lot of these things are, like, fucking kind of crazy, and there's a lot of different things going on here. 
that that I don't fully understand. And I'm just like, we need to really make sure we understand this before we're like, I don't want to go to them. I like those guys. I think they're they're right about that. There's a lot of people out there that got a lot of ideas but not a lot of action. So then when they can just pick a side and let everybody else do the thinking for them and then ride whatever, they just go along with whatever they're told. True. A lot of a lot of people have a lot of opinions, but they don't. They're not putting in a lot of action, and they aren't also like putting in a lot of effort to like look into some shit. Like I barely look into shit, and I feel like I have a better handle on shit than a lot of people that like don't. There's a lot of people commenting on things, mm-hmm. posting about things, and I'm like, I don't think you've. I have put very little effort into knowing about this, and you've seemed to have put far less in. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I know that's right. Yeah. Are, do you, I, it's hard to tell with uh, comic people that post to like stuff like on Twitter. Like you never know. They're just trying to like rat- rattle the cage and get you know go viral with a that's, hot take or that's something. The shit that gets the views. Yeah. The hot the hot take. See, not the I, hot take. I can't go like, down. Uh, I'm not trying to go down that path. I le- I learned quick in 2020. I was value. dude. I was posting about the, this whole thing is fake. Like fucking. Like, first two months of the pandemic, I was like, bullshit, <laughs> fuck you, not going to wear a mask, suck my cock. I was posting that kind of shit on Facebook, I was and people that. were like, ew. I was in, I was living in Portland, Oregon, dude, and everybody was like, ew, bad luck, ew, yikes, really? <laughs> yikes. And I was like, what? I was like, wait a minute, what? I thought it would be, you know, I thought that I was like, fuck, the, you know what I mean? Like, And it's like, I feel like a lot of people did that. And then I quickly realized, like, okay two things i quickly realized like okay this is kind of this is kind of weird maybe i should stop just talking about all this i don't really know anything about all this stuff and then the other thing i was like i'm gonna just like i'm gonna just hang back and like i don't even know how i feel like then it got into like a like i don't know what's going on like Mm -hmm. when everybody was buying the toilet paper you know what i mean and everybody was freaking out and i was like whoa i don't know i don't know i don't know what to think here anymore and then, and then by the time it got halfway through it, I was like, I was like, yeah, this is f- for sure sketchy and weird and fucked up. Like this whole, this whole, like everything being closed and everything's very, I don't believe in like half the shit they're saying. And it was just like, and so I'm like, but I'm not going to go and post about it. I saw a lot of people, like I stopped at that, like I stopped early. I saw a lot of people kept going and just went full send. Whether you were posting I, on either side of it, it was cringe. Yeah. Like, one dude was like, I can't believe that somebody would not wear their mask, you know, like, outside. And, you know, and then crazy. And people then you still s- wearing their masks now. That's fucking crazy. When you crazy. see somebody down walking down the sidewalk. That is fucking now, Looney Tunes. It's like, holy shit. That is Looney bet. Tunes. Just, it, this, just like bodybuilding is not in your algorithm, you know, the facts are not in their algorithm at all. Yeah. They're deep down that road. Not to be devil's advocate, side. not to be because I completely agree. You still wear a mask, don't you? I still, I still keep a mask at at a ha- at a hand's reach at any moment. No, yeah. absolutely not. I was taking that shit off early. I was like, fuck same, you. dude. In Portland, I was I was the only guy in my apartment building. It was like a fucking little tower thing, and it was like it was like one of the ones out here. You know what I mean? Like the one downtown, and it was like. It, and there was like uh, 11 or 21 floors. So I would always be running into people in the elevator and they were like so pit. There was people like people were there was a bunch of different reactions. There was like an old guy that was like, fuck you. And he would say that to me all the time. And then like the mass mandate got lifted. And I was like, like the next day after yeah. he gave me one of the fuck yous. And I'm just like, what's up? What's, <laughs> we good? You know? Well, he's the one that has to worry. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Awesome and but idea. uh. And he, but he had fifteen masks on. You know what I mean? So I'm like, whatever. And and it was just like, and it's funny that all that stuff is like doesn't matter anymore. Nobody thinks about it, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, you were you're we're not even gonna fall you're not even way. slated as an asshole back then. Mm-hmm. Now you're kind of. It was almost like we got like when the marijuana laws change and they're like supposed to like expunge all the old records. Like you never. You never really did anything wrong. Yeah, that's that's how that's how the fucking I feel like that's an how the asshole is. for getting the vaccine now. Ooh, not an asshole, but uh, yeah. I feel like I got duped. Duped, yeah. I didn't want it, but then my job told me I had to get it, and then I wanted to go to this comedy show at a theater in Buffalo uh, where you had to be vaccinated, and I was like, fuck. And it was it was a good show. We had like. Uh, 
my friend took me. We went to see Jim Jeffries, and uh, nice. We were gonna go backstage in the green room. And the Australian. Out. It was sick. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I was like, well, I do want to do. How that, ironic so that guess. you had to get vaxxed and to then, go see the like, Australian. Then, like a month later, they're like, nope. You, they, you know, I got it one month too soon. That if I would have so waited weird. one more month, I would have never had to get it. Nobody talks about how weird that is. Mm-hmm. Like I everybody put it off for so long. Everybody is just let's forget about it. Let's forget that it ever that we ever acted like that. Nobody's talking about. Hey guys, hey guys, guys. Remember the sh- the f- how fucking weird. Ninety percent of you are acting. You remember yeah. how weird. Nobody nobody fucking brings that shit up at all, right now. Like I'm. I mean, there's people. people on there's people quickly. on podcasts bringing it up, but I mean, like in light in real life. You know what I mean? It's like it, that with everything. The yeah. general population yeah. is just like, let's totally forget about that. And then my only thing is I wonder if in, like, years it's going to be, like, in, like, a decade. You know how people, like, everybody kind of agrees 9-11 was kind of fake. Or not fake, but kind of rigged, right? Yeah, it was yeah. kind of an inside job. That's the whole joke, right? Everybody agrees. Yeah, anyone with a brain in their head. Right. Anybody, no. yeah, anybody that, that can look at numbers job. and charts and graphs and, and facts and read, read things, they know, that, they know that that was weird and sketchy and probably not what they said it was. But we are all kind of agree on that, and then we, we moved along. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then it's like, I wonder, I think that same thing is basically happening right now yep. with, with the COVID thing. They're basically, everybody is like, yeah, that's all, that was all pretty fake and weird and pretty much not true, but we're going to forget about it. We're going to move on. naturally live in the past like that. People want to move forward and move on. So yeah, it's like, well, nothing we can do about it now. We can learn from it and move on. Yeah. So people just got over it. Yeah. Even though it just happened. It just happened so quick they dropped it. Like, with 9-11, we were like, it was American flags on cars, and it was like, it was mm-hmm. it was our country together. We are united as one America. And it was like that for like 10 fucking yeah, years funny. after that. What, where is, that, like what the, is the uh, COVID version of that? Now COVID. that we're out of that, can we now get, can, now that we're out of the initial scare, can we can we have our like no, post 9-11 American unity right now? Yeah, but that only lasted a little while too, just like with COVID. Those uh, flags on everyone's car only lasted a little while, just like the equivalent to that was putting a little needle in your Instagram bio. Oh, say, you're right. You I forgot vaccinated. about that. I already forgot then, about that. We moved on from, just like our, putting the needle in your Instagram bio to show that I'm vaxxed. Yep. Oh, yeah. That is so ancient now. It was and that was a big that was Tinder a year too. ago. I don't have Tinder anymore, but I did back then. Yeah, I saw. So my buddy does a a thing where he posts like cringy Tinder things and cringy like anonymously posts like cringy cringe on hinge is what his name is. And he really? Posts, like, yeah, he posts these like. I think he should be viral for it. It's yeah. fucking hilarious because it's like weird because on hinge specifically you can leave voicemail things. Dude, we should pull up Frankie. Pull up cringe on hinge on Instagram because we got to go through some of these. It's so lesser known. And dude, Frank, shout out to my friend Frankie. Do you how how deep do you go with like the metalcore stuff? How long ago did you start listening to metal and stuff? Been listening to metal, but I'm not that deep in the. Do you remember culture. a band from like 2009 called Monsters? No. Nope. Deathcore band. Okay, they had like a couple albums. It was a brief, beautiful moment. Frankie, I love you. If you're listening to this, so let's look through some. Go scroll down to some of the ones that are just. Wait, is this is this at Cringe on Hinge? It needs to be at cringe at cringe on hinge. No. Like just type That's it the hinge cringe. No, type it in uh search. Type it in like go go back to Instagram. See, Harrison is just not the best with internet browsers, dude. That's fine. We're getting there. No, to we'll be to, to be honest, Harrison is working on a laptop that is on top of a bunch of other shit and then uh He's doing his fucking. He's doing his damn. Yeah, he's on a desk that's built for a keyboard. Yeah, and he's working on a laptop that's connected across the room to the TV, and he's doing all this shit, and he's trying to write down notes about funny shit we're saying so we can make clips later, and he's switching the cameras. Harrison's doing the most, dude. He is. Harrison's the fucking man, dude. One day you will you will come do the podcast with me, and there'll be Harrison and Tony, and when I have when I have the money. Yeah, to have them both. Who's Tony? Your other producer. Tony is my other, but my other producer guy. Yeah, and uh, Harrison just jumped into this a uh, couple months ago to start helping me when Tony couldn't be here. Harrison's just like one of my best friends in the area, and he he's been he's been 
uh, he just jumped into it because he was into it. But the first podcast he did for me, it was like, it was, it was professional level camera switches, no post edits, like at all. Mm -hmm. It was just, and like the way he was going to like the the internet. Wit and dude, I gotta gas up my boy for a minute. Yeah, because it was it was it was a good man. It was incre. It was it was like almost almost autistic levels of how <laughs> for your first time how good it was. You're like, yeah, I just didn't know. I just thought I would try, and it was like sh laser sharp, laser laser sharp, like laser focused. He's the man. He I does not have autism. Him. That wasn't what I was saying. He could. You might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You might, dude. Cringe on Hinge, right there. Is this the one? I think so. Yeah, it's got to be. No, fuck. Yeah. Hang on, I gotta find. I gotta find it. I'm gonna. That's cringe on cringe. That, Did he? That do, one. He couldn't have deleted. Maybe it's on TikTok. Cringe on. Okay. Okay. Underscore cringe on Hinge. Underscore. Okay. Yep. Top one. Okay. Okay, so so with Hinge, I guess, and I've never had a dating app. Been with my girlfriend for a long time. Okay, mm -hmm. we've been together. A long, I haven't had a dating app. Never have been on Tinder. How long? I've been with her for ten years. So I've, we're ba we're married basically. But she would disagree. But well, I mean, hey, yeah. it's funny. I was trying to write jokes about this, but nobody believes me. But she's the one. She's she probably wants to get married less than we're talking about it now. But it's like she's the one that wants to get married and have kids and shit less than I do, it's, which is rare. rare. Mm -hmm. But it's like you know. That's why you have it. I always get the I, but it's the dude always the joke I was trying to write is like I always get slated as like the wow you're a piece of shit mm -hmm. you fucking prevent her that propose to her you know what I mean and it's like god damn it you know I was trying to I'm trying to write a joke about that but everyone's just like this fucking dork is lying but I don't know you'll it's, figure it out that is good thing topic to talk about yeah it's real it's true but with okay but with the, with hinge I guess you it's this rare this their special thing is you can leave a voice thing. And these people say the most fucking dumb ass, scary serial killer shit. Yeah. So any of those, I think we can try to listen to. I don't know. I didn't don't have this prepped or anything, so I don't know which ones. Which is the sound up for the computer? I have it right here too. Yeah. Um. Make sure it's oh down there in the corner, Green Harrison. Green flags I in like the corner. That. Down a little bit. There's a mute. There's like a little muted. Yeah, that thing. Oh man. Okay, so the, and we gotta we gotta share the wealth. We gotta watch some cringy girls and cringy guys. So let's get a couple of different ones here. I'm new here, so I don't know if people actually listen to these. But what I'm looking for is basically someone who wants to get high together and cuddle while we watch TV. Message her right now. <laughs> <laughs> that one's not even that cringy. Go back more. Just go. You're confident. You did not get the COVID shot. You are single, heterosexual man. You're masculine. You respect women. You have good conflict resolution skills, good communication. You're a happy person regardless if you're single or in a relationship. Oh, it you just keeps going. You don't have any emotional baggage in that you're looking for something that's going to compliment your life that's, that's you're a confident woman that knows what she wants that is a woman that knows what she wants it's just a little specific. it's just for some reason feels a little crazy to kind of be to know that to have that that rehearsed mm -hmm. to just be able to fire that off there's something a little crazy about about just like what do i want in a man you know because if i'm like zach what do you want in a woman you're like ah beautiful six pack she's got a fucking look like a like a dude like a ripped dude basically yeah yeah and then and then she has to want to, she has to want to have kids and like be okay with me like it'll it'll take you a minute to figure it out but the way that she was like what do i want in a man well you know she had it all fucking loaded that's she's been saying that a lot Pretty basic needs though. She Pretty a no no single she, heterosexual man. She made it sound simple, but I bet you it's kind of complicated with this her. guy. Couldn't be simpler. I go crazy for chicken wings. Oh my fucking god, dude! Big ass he mood. He wants to hit wing stop on Frank, Friday you night. dirty dog. So funny. So there's no voice message on that one, dude. The craziest ones are back more. The, like the early ones that he was posting were so fucking weird. I bet dudes are saying some wild shit. These women are probably gonna be. Here's an original for you. I am here for you. I am here for you. Pretty Just good. Just come 
to me. Baby, I'm waiting. <laughs> I am here for you. I am here for you. <laughs> if you never loved like this before. Dude. I actually incredible. Love that. No, no, it's incredible. But you have to approach all these things as I, if you're we on would, a dating. Yeah, first app. round is always on me. I'm not a beta male. <laughs> <laughs> first round is always on me. I'm not a beta male. <laughs> he did, he got minute, that early wait minute, morning. Wait a minute, just hang woke on, up. Hang on, you right gotta you too. gotta pull that one up again because we weren't ready. Hang on, because the podcast needs to hear it again, and this has to go on the internet. This is so. First round is always on me. I'm not a beta male. <laughs> Number one rule G. being an alpha male, don't say you're an alpha male. Dude, yeah. It's like, I'm not a beta. But hang on. Hang on, dude. Could you imagine? You, you're going too fast, Harrison. We have to comment on these. Could you imagine? What do women think of that? No girl is, like, sick, yet <laughs> my, that is my knight in shining armor. He has that early morning just woke up voice, too. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Listen, baby. First round's always on me. Listen. I'm not a beta male. Not a fucking beta male. Despite what I've been told my whole life. Listen, that fucking male. check comes. I'm fucking pulling my haters. fucking wallet out. I'm going to fucking pull my wallet out. Oh, man. I'm going to fucking whip that debit card out. I'll Fuck the, that. We're going to build the, the credit door. score. We're gonna, I'm an alpha male. Alphas build their credit. I'm going to fucking whip my credit card out. I'll pay it off on time. I don't know if you guys have heard That's of what alpha males Andrew do. They pay Tate. their fucking bills. <laughs> my hero all right let's get another one dude one thing i'll never do again is buy and take antibiotics from a guy oh, in mexico kids. that works in a little shack and does not speak english it didn't end well but i'm alive what yeah, that girl wait why would cool. you put this She's... stuff this is the thing is she thought that was funny and cool we are her. not taking these statements in the correct context you with are looking for you are looking for someone to hook up with someone hot mm -hmm. someone to have sex with someone to maybe have a relationship with someday you are looking for someone to be intimate with and this is their moment to tell you a little bit about themselves and this is the shit that they're fucking putting on there so crazy that is incredible a little weird give us some more so if we match i will be talking to you if you don't feel like talking, that's fine. I will not wait a couple of days for a response. <laughs> oh, no. This poor guy. This guy is not getting responded to. Oh, and shit. is pissing him off, dude. Oh, my God. So many girls have, like, put him off, and he's getting pissed. Holy Jesus fuck, dude. That is a, see those are the ones that we're looking for. Let's we did this, yeah, we're hunting we're the guys once dude, we're the hunting guys for, we're hunting for gold. Wild. I want more more male ones because they're they're definitely funny. Well, I was shopping for a new car, which one's me a cool convertible or an SUV. Too bad I didn't know my credit was wet, because now I'm driving off the lot in a U subcompact F R E E that spells free creditreport.com, baby. <laughs> Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going, but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. I mean, that's pretty funny. He was like, I'll do the credit report song. Yeah, the type of girls responding to that. I mean, just fucking dorks. They're... <laughs> Ooh, there is a woman out there like, oh my God. He's so funny. Is... Yeah. <laughs> who the who? Silly. There's He's girls. silly. None that you'd want to fuck, but there are plenty of girls out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I've been on dating apps for a long time. <laughs> I've gone on many dates, you know, with females that like me and our dates go well. And then they're not ready to be exclusive or they're not <laughs> ready to actually start a relationship. So if you are really not in the position that you want to be in a relationship, just go ahead and pass me by because I'm not wasting my time, effort, and money anymore for no reason. <laughs> so, these guys, what I'm hearing, they're making the mistake of taking out the uh, past trauma 
They're applying that to the. These are like yeah. some woman hater guys. They've been it's denied. It's so mentally ill. They're saying it to it's everyone. It's so mentally ill. But they have the all the ones that hurt them in the past in the back of their head. That's so mentally they're ill. Like I'm done. I'm done dealing with these people that won't re- respect me. Dude, what? Th- I think women only laugh at that. And like, what? I think one one what woman hears that and goes, heard, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, totally. That is Preach. what you deserve. Preach, King. Yeah. Like no, 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 no woman, no woman like, hears that and goes, pathetic. you know what? He's right. There's a lot of bitches out there. Pre- Preach, King. N- not a single, That's not a single woman. Avoid. Dude, we could go for miles on this. Frank has done groundbreaking work. My buddy Frank. Shout out Frankie. Dating me is like dating me is like hearing this at least once a week. Fine day, Sunday, in my opinion, best day of the week. Why is that, Dudley? No post on Sundays? Right you are, Harry. No post on Sundays. No blasted letters today. No, sir. Not one single bloody letter. Not one. No, sir. Not one uh, blasted miserable. Blah. All right. Yes, all right. You know what? Hang on. She accent. sounds She sounds like a cool, nerdy, kind of funny. She reads... She's a Harry Potter girl, but that was that was cringy. Was that the dialogue from Harry Potter? I think that was like a it yeah an excerpt. What do you think about that? How does that make you feel? I wouldn't uh, DM her, but hey, let's see those bikini pictures. Who cares what the yeah. audio says? Have you ever That's dressed up like for. Hermione? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my! God. I'll definitely know it's time to delete Hinge when a guy asks about me and wants to get to know me and my personality and asks me out on a date instead of hey do you have a snapchat and asking a bunch of inappropriate things when that guy comes along and we've gone on a few dates and it's gone well then it's time to delete them Wait, these poor people. Wait, hang on. I, I'm confused. Was she saying that she wants the guy the way she wants to find her relationship person is that she wants him to say what's your Snapchat and like I want to fucking eat your pussy, and then and then <clears throat> like what do your tits look like and ask a bunch of stuff like that, and then and then after that guy goes on a couple of dates and things are going well, then that's when she deletes the app. That's what she's saying, right? I don't think it, it was the Snapchat guy. I think so. no. I think she was saying once the Snapchat a, once guy. Once a guy actually asks her out on a date, and then she'll delete. No, it. she was saying the opposite. Can you get that was one she? again? She was. She was saying I know that it's I. It's not when I think she said it's not when a guy. I gotta hear it again. I know when to delete uh, Hinge. Is what is what it was. I'll definitely know it's time to delete Hinge when. Voice, a guy asks about me and wants to get to know me and my personality and asks me out on a date instead of instead of okay hey, I've do heard you enough have a Snapchat? okay yeah you're right you were you were totally right yeah I'm sorry I th- I heard it I heard right it the there. other way that is a good woman she's not falling she just wants, she doesn't want change Snapchat no no she was dropping date. bars she was dropping real fucking bars about how it is out there that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. She also had the voice of a twelve-year-old uh, doll. She probably has an OnlyFans where she dresses up like anime characters mm-hmm. and goes. Mm-hmm. She probably does that whole thing. Totally. Some ears and some neon lights in the back. I've never seen it. Not once. I don't subscribe, but I don't subscribe, but it's popped up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Everyone should be an organ donor, and not just like. <laughs> just donor, but it should be a thing where, when you turn eighteen, you're automatically registered to be an organ donor, unless you have medical or religious reasons not to be. I'd be That's I such would a random. Everyone about to do- should be donate, an donate this dick. That was such a random thing. To, she got that message back for sure. That's such a random thing to put on the dating app. Are you bored of this? Is this fun for you? Are you this having fun? This is fine. It's fine. Do you want to stop this? Let's move. No, why? Do I look like it? I don't know. I can't read that you, weed's dude. weed's kicking in. I don't know you that well, dude. My eyes are We closing. just fucking met, dude. No, I'm just kidding. It's we're dude, listen, this is, this is my show, and we're going to watch this for the next seven hours. The doors are locked. You're fucked. You you have a show soon, actually. No, you're good. You're good, right? What time you got to be there? Totally good. Dude, 
We're fucking rock, rocking I, and ripping. I'm I, having a good time. Are you having a good start without me? So are you having a good time? I'm having a good time, dude. Thanks I would love, I would love to have you back. It's this is fucking let's do awesome. It. We should do this every. Should do it. Fucking let's do it seven times a, a month. Let's go. No, um, I'll brag to my. Fr- it's so hard to pick one, Frankie. You're pretty good at this. How many episodes have you done? Uh, thirty. This your number thirty one. Nice. 31. Yeah, you're getting comfortable behind the table. I've, I just think like I've kind of always been, dude. It's just my age time with uh, comedy, too. It's just more times to do it. It's just yeah. like. I've, and dude, I think that like some people were born like seven feet tall and they're mm-hmm. athletic or they're, you know, really strong and giant and just or whatever. And it's like some people were born and they can play the violin without looking at it and they can just hear it's it. It's never the same person that's I'm, seven feet tall and can play the violin. That's so true. You, you, Holy most shit. You just only blew my thing. fucking mind, <laughs> dude. Whoa. I wonder what the, is about Have you that. ever thought about that? There's no Yao Ming playing the fucking violin. Like, no giant, tall, athletic person. Is that just because... Okay, hang on. Malcolm Gladwell would have a fucking answer for this. Is that it's, it's because seven feet tall people don't generally get ushered into music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's because when, exactly when you're is. ginormous, they're like, sports. He will play sports. Yep. Or he will go work construction. He will lift heavy. Th- he will be a home builder. He will lift heavy. Th- you know what I mean? Like, people don't... Or he will go play sports, get injured, get addicted to pain pills, and then become a home builder. You know what I mean? Like, but no, I don't know. It's like it's like people are just kind of ushered into certain things. Yep. You know what I mean? Based on so, based on based on where, based on where they're from, where they live, how much money, how affluent their family is. There's all these like different variables of like how why people get put where they go. But yeah, that is a very interesting observation. Sorry. I just I I mean, I just I had never thought about that that you don't ever see uh but anyway, what I was saying is that uh like some people are born they're really tall or they can play the violin, but like my thing is that I have always been good at talking. And I've oh, it's always been shut up Taylor. It's always been the teachers are he's really great in class, but he just talks so much. You know what I mean? It's always been a talk. It, he's too talkative. Shut the fuck. And I've gotten a lot better over the years. Like, you know, growing up, like I was always told to be quiet. I was always told to talk quieter. That would be good for your stand up. The <clears> gift <throat> of gab is something that you really can't learn. That's part of your nature. It's not. And, you know, some of the funniest people I know, they have the gift of gab. They can talk about a lot of things for a long time. Yeah, that could benefit you. Well, maybe I need to maybe I need to do the opposite of what I've been basically doing my whole life, which is like trying to tone Contain it down. It. And let maybe it I just need to kind <clears> of <throat> maybe I just need to let. And that's what ranting. I do here. That's why I love doing this. Like this place when I have people in here and we get a little tipsy and we fucking have fun. It's like that's I we can fucking let loose in here. I can just do what I want. And I think that's why it comes off. I think a lot of people do. And I've said this before and people are probably tired of hearing it. But I've it. A lot of people do anything whether it's the music or comedy or podcasting they're like i should do this so i can be popular so i can do you know what i mean and it's like or or like a lot of people will be in a band right and then they're like i should do a podcast because i should because it's Mm -hmm. it's smart for me to like promote my band and shit and it's like i just want to fucking hang and do it i just and i love podcasts abnormally like the same weird way that i love comedy and the same weird way that i love music where it's like when i see other people do it i go I want to do that. I want to go do that. Like I watch, I sit at home and I watch your mom's house until it pisses me off. And I have to go to my own podcast studio and record my, it doesn't piss me off. It makes me like, it's the opposite of that. I guess I watch it until I'm like, I'm like, fuck, I'm sick of watching. I want to do it. I get mad at myself for not doing and for watching. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of how I got into stand up. I was like, I want to do that. I watched it for so long. Exactly. It's like, I have to get up there. I'm jealous. Yes. I want to be up there. Yes. Um, Dude, can I say something that is totally, it's totally off of, it's totally, I'm totally out of place saying this because I haven't been doing stand up long enough. But I feel like I noticed that, uh, like a lot of people that do comedy, <clears throat> they're, and maybe they're really, fo- they're more focused on it than I am, which, I commend them for and that's their thing and that's their one thing and I do a bunch of different shit so I have to focus on different shit but I'm trying to do all the things but it's like I feel like 
they stop going and watching. I've noticed this a lot where like a lot of people stop going and watching and like go as a fan. Mm-hmm. You know, like if like if you don't know somebody at Mothership to get you in, then buy a ticket and go once in a while. Because I, when I go to those shows and I watch people, and you probably watch it a lot if you work at Vulcan, you're watching constantly, I watch right? So many shows. Yeah, but it's you great. but the difference is you probably watch. I still love comedy. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is like I feel like I see, and even I've only been in the game fucking you know almost a year now. December will be a year, and it's like I I've only been going to mics for a year, and it's like. But what I've noticed is that people are not. And this is also Tim Warner, and shout out to Tim, but this is also Tim Warner's, one of his gripes. He's a lot of gripes. We, mm-hmm. we love Tim, but, you know, Tim, you got a lot of gripes, buddy. Okay. But one of his one of his gripes that I agree with is that there there's not a lot of people watching the other people. And even if they're, even if they're just eating shit and it's just so painful to watch them. Like, and you've seen these jokes a million times. I like to watch watch Tony Pepperoni again to see, is he going to do the fucking, you know, uh, is he going to do Joey Macaroni the same way he did it? You know what I mean? I want to see everybody see how they do shit differently from last week. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I I don't know. He has a serious point there, I feel like, where, and I'm from a world where you get outed and posted online on, on Facebook about like, you left, he left the show before after he played right oh, really that's the world i've come from i come from like you're a fucking you're a bad person and you know what the other the, but but at the same rate a lot of people they're they're saying good set bro when they didn't fucking watch mm-hmm. you know what i mean there's a lot of people out there didn't was getting drunk at the bar after their set didn't watch and then they were like hey dude good set dude there's a lot of that with metal you know what i mean like mm-hmm. with them in the music thing there's a lot of that so and i i haven't watched every set you know what I mean, like, and but I've never good set. I've we never. We can't watch every. Set, I can honestly you say, a fan. Listen, still continue to watch because that's what you loved and why you got into it. Yeah, watching them. I don't think. I don't think there might have been maybe one or two times, maybe, but I really don't think I ever good set bro a band guy when I didn't watch him. I really don't think I. I think I almost have a clean slate with that. Yeah, that's good. I think I pretty much never did. But there do. There's so many people. That uh, that seriously, they they're like good set, dude. Seriously, you guys are awesome. And you're like, oh, that's funny because I haven't played yet. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, yeah, that's happened that to me before. Be crazy. Great set, dude. And you're like, oh, holy shit! Yeah. I didn't know the metal community was like that. Oh yeah, dude. It's like Hollywood. Yes. Yeah, great set, dude. And you're like, okay, haven't played yet. Like you never tell them either. You're like, thanks, dude. And then yeah, you run over know. to your band. And you're like, that guy just yeah, fucking yeah. told me good <laughs> set, dude. <laughs> that guy just told me good set. Holy shit, it's true though. It's it's but but with to bring it back to comedy, it's like I do notice that that is not the default. I think to watch other people and pay attention to what they're saying. Like you other watch it because you're a fan, you enjoy. I wa- I enjoy. I you do still I enjoy do like watching. It. I like watching, and I like going to see the big guys. Just like I like to still go to metal shows. And when I'm at a metal show, I get the same way, Zach. Or that's how I knew I had to do stand up and try it, and like just fucking do it, and try it because the metal thing was the same way. Was when I watch them, it's like fuck. Like I want more. I want to play. I want to play. I want to get up there. And that's how I almost have to force myself to go to metal shows sometimes because I haven't been in a while, right? And like I'm like oh shit like not force myself but it's like oh I'd rather just play Starfield and fucking you know jerk off or you know whatever and it's like but it's a late and I forgot this show was tonight you know what I mean and I'm like fuck I see it on Instagram people are there I'm like fuck I should go to this show and so I get I pack up and go and I, I get out there and it's like I fucking watch a band and I'm like oh I can't fucking wait to get up there you know what I mean and the same thing was happening with stand up and like when I first got into the whole metal thing I was like. I was, I knew there was a feeling because I was watching the band and I would think I was like trying to be like a mosh pit guy. Like when I first got into it, I was like, that's cool. Like I need to be in the pit, you know, tough guy in the pit. Yeah. When I was like really young, you know, 16 or something. And then, and then I get to, uh, like get hit a couple times in the face. I'm like, I don't like this. Uh, Listen, listen, 
I don't like this at all. I don't want to get hit anymore. If it's the same feeling, have you ever had a basketball bounce up into your fucking nose and hit you like this in the nose? I have. And you're like, ugh, and it feels like your brain, like you're like, am I gonna die? And your no, you feel like you don't have your nose anymore, like it's gone. It's all numb. It's all numb and fucked up. That's how you feel. And I was like, I don't like this at all. And I want to do what they're doing up there because that looks fucking awesome. And so the more I was watching, I was like, I need more. And I was leaving the shows like, ah, I'm just, I wish I want more. And then, and it was the same thing with stand up too, where I was like going to all these shows and I was like, mm, it's just not enough for me. Like I really need to just go try and do. And then when I do the duck and I bomb in front of four people and I just eat my own ass and I just, I feel so good though, for some reason afterwards. And so we, it is a weird addiction, I think. Cause you did it. It's like going to the gym. It's paying your dues. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I fucking, at least I got up and I ate shit. Feels good. Uh, uh, Alden told me, tastes good. Yeah. Like, dude, I was eating shit the other night, and he was like, tastes good. And it's like, that's how you need to think about he it. He is dropping knowledge all the time. He's wise, man. Alden Shaw, dude. He drops wisdom I on love me him all the so time. Much. I love Alden so much. It's awesome. He was like the night, he was like a, a, a warm blanket at the open mic when I was like young and new and scared. Like, first two times, three times, I was like, oh, he's so nice. And I would go over and, hey, Alden, remember me? Blanket. And he was just like so stoked that I was coming back. He was like, hey. You're back. Even Harrison. We made Harrison sign up. I made Harrison sign up. You were there. No, it was at Axis. Oh, okay. You were there. You made him of go up. Of course I was there. No, no, you okay, made him okay, you yeah, made him yeah, go yeah, up because now. oh didn't Harrison didn't realize it was you until just now. No, I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> you fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> you remembered. I remember now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. great. This guy did just like says, Hey, you're going on in ten. I was like, dude, really? Come on, man. I'm here to watch you. I'm not here to fucking. I don't have anything prepared. He's like, he's like, scroll through your go, phone and just sink or swim, you bitch. Do. You're going yeah. up either way. I was Might like, dude, well. I'm not gonna back it's down. But fuck you, dude. <laughs> it's fine. But what did you tell yeah. me? What did you tell it me afterwards? Fine. What was your experience you do during and afterwards? Oh yeah, was, I've been wanting to get on stage for years, and I just felt fucking elated. I was fucking so happy to. You have to get like so Sparta kicked to into just, it. I was so glad to just bomb and just get. You know, a bomb out of the way. You know, but one, you one didn't really bomb that hard. Was the from what I remembered, it's like we should have filmed it. But it was like it, it. You, you for going off the dome. You talked about how your real name, your first name, your real name is is Honey Mustard Singh, uh, Kansanji. Pretty much. And I, I can't say it perfectly. You say it. Honey Mustard Singh Kansanji. Yeah, I can't roll the R's that good. Honey Mustard, Honey Mustard Singh Kansanji. That was better. I rolled the R. What is that? Uh, I was raised Sikh. I was raised Indian. Even though my parents are white, I was raised uh, in a Sikh community. So, okay. Harrison's so interesting, bro. Yeah. You don't even understand looking at this guy how really <laughs> jam packed he is, dude. He's got so many secrets and amazing. He's an amazing person. I love you, Harrison. Yeah, I love you too. But yeah, <clears throat> we we got Harrison up that first time, and and he was like, dude, I'm gonna be honest with you. We came back here and fucking we're jazzed about it. And he was like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was fucking pissed at you at first. Right, you were mad at me at first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was heated, like, because I was in such like a down vibe mood when we went. I just wanted to watch and have a beer and like let my introvert happen. And then you were just like, nope. I was like, fuck, dude, I'm just not in the mood. But I'm not gonna back down. You know me. I'm not gonna let you like, yeah, fucking win. No, <laughs> no. Like, you're competitive. You. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That was awesome, though. That, that was, was cool because he didn't even do that bad. And it's like, dude, sometimes you just have to be thrown into the fucking fire for something. You know what I mean? Whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sparta only, kicked into it. Only good friends will do something like that. Dude. Yeah. Thanks for that, brother. Well, fucking he put you up, dude. Yeah, dude. He's the one that put yeah, you up. Yeah, that's true. Thank you both. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I just told him to do it, and they were like, all right, you're up next. <laughs> they have the power, not me, dude. They run the list. Yeah, it won't be the last, dude. I'm going to actually write something and. You know. Are you gonna come back? Fuck you gonna yeah, come back dude. out of the axe? Yeah, Mike, yeah, oh, oh, it's dude, that's, pretty, you, that's pretty much how I started. My very first open mic, I was kind of just thrown into it. I wanted to for years. I was already writing, but I had no intentions of going on stage that night, and I was kind of thrown into it because I was at an open mic nobody was at. They really? needed more comedians. They're like, "You want to go up?" I'm like, "Fuck it, let's do it." How old were you? This was five years ago. I was uh, so yeah, 25. Just turned 25. Nice. Yeah, and um, 
then after that i was like now i am really going to write and prepare so yeah. my first real open mic it was an eight minute open mic you got yeah. eight minutes i did a full eight minutes off what i no How? notes i said my set over and over for months recorded it into my phone played it for my friends <laughs> Yeah, so lame. I would never do that now. I used to stand in my garage and say my full set into my voice recording That's on my phone. That's probably good though. Now I don't do that. And now I'm funnier. But but you ha- but I that was, was so when you nervous. but that was when you started. Want to get though. every word word for word. Yeah. I used to write so much. And that has to be so much. I think that has to be that is not that couldn't be possibly it be a negative. Couldn't possibly be a negative. No, it was that, not that a negative. Glad it's kind of like the whole that. in the mirror thing. Now I would not do that, but it was. It showed I was dedicated. You know, I was doing that. That's how yeah. much it meant to me that I would stand in my garage and like I literally look in the mirror and say my full set word for word. Yeah. But now it turns out that's not the way to be funniest. You got to be a little looser to be funniest. You know. Yeah, I feel like at least I for don't, me, it's not my style. Some I comics would, like George Carlin, like rigid. He's yeah. saying his material, word, for word, word for word. I would like to know who still does that. Like, I would like who to know who out. That? I would like to know who out here that we know or that we watch that like mothership. Like, who who does it like almost word for word? Because you'd probably be surprised at who does. Like, there's some probably do, there's sure. probably some people. Like, I bet you William Montgomery is pretty word for word. Pretty word for word. Right. Like, I bet you he. But he, seeing so much comedy now, and you know, the funniest moments are the genuine crowd work yeah nothing gets really a bigger pop than something that happens in the moment that's why for me i feel like you have to be a little looser otherwise you're not going to let those in yes they're not going to come if you're rigid yeah you have to be a little looser and the new tags aren't going to come out of thin air if you're because the crowd can feel it they know when something was in the moment or when you're just going through something you've said a hundred times already yeah that's where the art comes in. You got to pretend you're saying it for the first time when you've only said when you've <sighs> said it for a hundred. That times. is fucking true. It's all. It's an act. You got to, yeah. you know, pretend and be in the moment. But, but you can still so, do it because you're you can excited still about. Feel it even when you are loose. Even when you are like fluid with it, and you're saying your jokes like they're off the top of your head, even though you said it a bunch. The crowd still knows, so that's why they still laugh harder when there is something genuine. When there is something that just happened, the loudest pops in any comedy club are things that happen in the moment. Okay. You got to be open that to that. That makes sense. A little looser. Yeah. 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 Loosen up, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little lube on there. <laughs> <laughs> Sag Black, I think we need to wrap this up, dude. Let's We've been going at it. We've been going at it, brother. We did it. Plug your shit. Let people know where to find you, um, what your weekly shows are. Right there in that uh, one up top. Zach Black ATX on Instagram. Check out Outlaw Comedy. Uh, doing shows all around town. Buy some tickets. Come to the show. They're a lot of fun. Book the most badass comedians in Texas. He does. And other than that, uh, like, follow, subscribe <laughs> to uh, Gorecast. Oh, no, dude. Zach Black, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking hey, Outlaw buddy. Comedy. Oh, you broke the mic stand. No, it's all good. Right off we'll get it. Um, follow Zach Black, you guys. If you're in Austin... Thursday is at uh, East Siders, Austin East Siders over off airport. It should be yeah, uh, it should be a weekly thing that people go to. It's funny. The lineups are top tier. Um, support Zach Black, support fucking uh, local Austin comedy and not just the big guys, you know what I'm saying? Not just not just the not just the famous people that are already famous because your next most famous comedian is here at these at Zach Black shows. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's a it's kind of true. It's it is true. so true. It's very true. Um, Harrison, let's run the outro. That was fun as hell.